Hello and welcome back to my channel, What If Deku Tuo. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off part 11 of our series, What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku and Harim? If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Guy Number 23 from Fanfiction Net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. Enter Team B. The news spread so fast that some teachers wondered what was the point in keeping some things as secrets. It took two days for the entire school to know about Midoriya and his decision to keep the villain who kidnapped him nearby, as a student above all things. After that, the table where Midoriya used to eat during lunch became the center of attention. All the eyes were turned to him, but his eyes stared at the crazy blonde from afar. As you would expect, no one wanted to sit near a villain and serial killer, so Himiko just sat alone in a table at the corner. Outside of the classes, she didn't even try to socialize. Her interactions resumed into talking with the librarian whenever she needed a book to study. The old lady had to make a comment that she read more books than the average students at UA. He knew the reason for such dedication, yet he refused to accept it. Deku-kun? He snapped out of his thoughts as Kayoka rested her hand on top of his, squeezing it gently and Ochako called his name. She quickly looked at the general direction he was looking and spotted the blonde, which made her quite angry, though she didn't let him see it. She's still bothering you, isn't she? You know, I can go there and talk some sense in her if you want, and it's okay, Ochako, really. This is something I have to do myself. Thank you for your concern anyway. We're all worried about you, Ribbit. You don't have to carry the world on your shoulders, you know? Sue, May, sorry for making you all worry. I promise I'll be fine. We'll look forward on that promise, Momo said in a light tone. Watching the interactions of this group, two tables away, was the class rep of 1B Kendo Itsuka. Since Tsunatori mentioned there was a whole chart for ships involving the guys from 1A, she started to watch them with more attention, specifically the main topic of her female friends, Midoriya Izuku. For some reason she didn't know, the green-haired teen was involved in most of the pairings, be it because of some interaction or just because he looked cute with someone. Another reason for her little analysis was because of what Yayarazu told her the other day, rather how she said it. It was clear to Kendo that she felt something for Midoriya, even if she denied it. Maybe she wasn't even aware that she might have a crush on him. The black-haired girl was the one Kendo knew best. After the internship with Yuabami, they kind of made a connection and became friends. Last but not less important, Midoriya just was recovering from a pretty traumatic experience, so she couldn't help but feel sad for him. Add to that the fact that Toga Himiko was staying as a student at the same class he was, and she could start to imagine how tense and on the edge Midoriya might be feeling at this moment. Even if just a little, she wished to help him with something. Back to the group circling Midoriya, Kendo started to think about her own ship, though it was kinda embarrassing to admit she had a ship. From the place she was looking, she could tell Yayarazu and Midoriya had a good friendship, but it didn't go much further than that. It was easier to see if you compared the way he talked with them. The pink-haired girl and the one with the round face Ashido and Yuraraka seemed to be closer to him, or at least more intimate since he didn't mind them being so close as they were. Or maybe Yayarazu was just shy. Kendo tried to picture all the ships her friends made, mentally noting if they worked or not, in her opinion. Yuraraka and Ishido looked like the best ones, considering how anxious Midoriya was. It was a good match with the bright natures of both girls. After them, probably the girl from support course and Asui. They were pretty straightforward and said what they had in mind. She didn't know Hagakure that much, but she thought it was okay. Same for the earphone girl. And Yayarazu, well, she was very smart and a polite girl. Maybe the gap between them regarding social classes could be a problem. But she knew Yayarazu wasn't the type of girl to bother with the status quo of her friends. She heard Midoriya was some kind of genius when it came to forming strategies and analyzing quirks. 
so that could be a good start point for her black-haired friend. Whatcha lookin' at Kendo Sanua, keeping the eyes on the prize, I see Tsunatori saw the orange-haired girl, resting her chin in one hand and looking like her head was in another planet. The short blonde turned to the direction she was looking and spotted Midoriya eating with his friends, enough to connect the dots in her head. She nudged the class rep, bringing her back to Earth. Huh? Prize? What are you talking about? Come on, Kendo-chan. You totally spaced out looking at Midoriya boy sitting on the other table. I did not space out looking at him, Tsunatori. So you were just daydreaming? No, I was thinking, and it happened that he came to my mind, it's all. Awa, isn't it cute? What if I popped out your horns, Tsunatori? They'll grow again anyway, Kendo slowly got closer to Tsunatori in a playful menacing way. The short girl jumped back and held her horns in a defensive way. No, I just polished them. You can't pull my horns just because you have a crush and doesn't want to say it. You're talking a lot for someone at horn-grabbing distance. Oi oi, what's going on here? Tsunatori, what did you do to make Big Sis angry? Takage just joined them, curious about what made Kendo threat to pop off Tsunatori's horns. It was a little joke between the class, but everyone was aware of how much the short blonde liked her horns shining. Takage chan Kendo-chan wants to take off my horns because she has a crush on Midoriya. I just polished them this morning. Sunatori hid behind the green-haired girl. Really now? Since when? You have to tell me the details. I love to hear a spicy gossip. She's just saying this to provoke me, Takage. I don't have a crush on Midoriya Kendo defended herself, but there was a faint blush in her cheeks, almost invisible. Well, almost is the key word. Guys, Kendo has a crush on Midoriya. Look, she's even blushing Takage shouted to her friends at the table. Everyone looked at her with surprised eyes, then turned to focus on the orange-haired girl with some kind of awe. The faint pink in her face increased a little being under the stares of her classmates, so she did the only reasonable thing at a moment like this. Big hand karate chop at Takage's head. What kind of news you think you're spreading, Takage? At the table, the other students from 1B kept eating and chatting normally, if not a little surprised with this news. Well, that was really unexpected, Shishida said, munching at a large piece of bread. What part? Kendo liking Midoriya? Awase asked the big teen with glasses. No, Kendo actually liking someone. Oh, I see. What's that supposed to mean? Kendo shouted from across the table. Oh, no offense, I just thought that. It's kind of hard picturing you in love with someone Shishida quickly explained himself. How to put it? The leader of the girl's gang isn't supposed to fall in love, Fukudashi said though it would make sense if Midoriya was some a delinquent too. I told you already, I'm not a delinquent just because I like motorcycles, and what's wrong with me having a crush? Nothing, really. You're a girl, after all, Awase said. Yeah, and I get why it's Midoriya. The guy might look weak, but he's really manly when he's serious, Tetsutetsu shouted, flexing one arm. I suppose you're right, but I don't like him. Kendo felt her face getting hotter by the minute. She had to clarify this mistake. Really? Too bad, I think you two would make a good couple. Kendo just stared at the boy with sharp teeth in silence. The thought of Midoriya and her as a couple circled her mind briefly. Before she could protest, Tsunatori cut her to it, but not to defend the orange-haired girl. I know, right? They would look so cute together she said placing her hands on her cheeks and waving her head. Tetsutetsu simple nodded with his mouth full. Hmm, coming to think of it, maybe Kirishima would be more of her type? Awase pondered with a hand on his chin. I think it would be Todoroki, Shishida added. Oh, speaking of the icy hot boy, he's some competition for you too, Kendo, I just know it, Takage said, wrapping an arm around the girl's shoulder. But don't worry. Even though I really want to see this ship sail, I'm fully supporting you and... Can you all drop that topic? Kendo suddenly shouted. Seriously, I don't like Midoriya for the umpteenth time. Oya, what is it that I hear? Kendo-san, don't tell me you're developing feelings for someone from 1A when you have much better options right here. 
Class 1B if fairly superior in matters of good looks. Take me for an exam. Monoma came out of nowhere, heard only a part of the chat and was already saying things out loud so the guys from 1A at the nearby tables could hear. Kendo didn't hesitate in hitting the back of his neck. She didn't know where to hide her face now, something she wanted to do as soon as possible since she felt her cheeks too warm to be comfortable. And thanks to her noisy friends and Monoma, she had a lot of stares focused at her general direction. The ones that made her more anxious were the eyes of a specific table focusing on her, the eyes of the girls sitting with Midoriya. She quickly glanced at Yayurazu before leaving the table with the excuse of dropping Monoma somewhere. Meanwhile, the seven girls looked as Kendo left dragging knocked out Monoma. Worry was the word to describe them. Someone else heard what I heard? Mina asked the others. Just what we needed, another girl looking for trouble Ochako tightened a bit her fists. Calm down girls, it's just Kendo San Momo was quick to tranquilize her friends. Momo Chan Ochako looked at end of the table where Izuku sat with Kayoka and Hagakure at his sides, then leaned closer and said in a lower voice, We can't let more girls get near Izuku. I'm telling you to not worry about Kendo. She's fine. Ribbit, you and her went to the same internship, right? Yes, I know her to some extent, and she wouldn't make a move on Izuku. Still, I really don't like the idea of girls hanging around him casually. They might fall on his charms eventually, Mina pointed out. I have to agree with Mina, I'm kind of an example, said Mei. I know Izuku can be very smooth without noticing, but trust me, she's not an enemy. Kendo was truly concerned when she got to know he went missing. She must be worried because Himiko is here, just like us. Momo tried to convince the others that they didn't need to worry about the orange-haired girl. She liked the thought of knowing her enough to feel safe about it. Plus, Kendo showed true concern when Izuku was kidnapped. Girls, did something happen? Izuku noticed they went a little quiet and then saw them whispering something, so he instantly assumed that something serious was going on. The girls stiffened a bit, hesitating a little to answer, but Tsuyu managed to come up with something. Nothing really. We were just talking that it's been some time since we all got, you know, intimate. Ribbit. The comment was enough to put a faint blush in everyone's faces. Indeed, since Izuku returned, they didn't even mention the topic, something understandable given the traumatic experience he went through. Ochako and Ninuri saw the bad state he was after the rescue, and by the way they described it, the girls agreed that Izuku needed some time to recover, physical and mentally. So far he seemed back in shape, regarding his strength. The green teen recovered his muscles faster than they expected, even considering he always works so hard. About his mental state, he wasn't freaking out around Himiko, though it was obvious he stood on the edge having her near. So, was it safe to say that they could, ahem, have some fun again? Oh, um, well, if you want to then. You don't have to force yourself, Deku-kun. We'll wait until you feel ready. Ochako said that, but deep inside Izuku felt a little guilty. After what happened with Himiko, he couldn't shake off the feeling of insecurity that lingered in the back of his mind. What if all of sudden one of them melted and the blonde appeared again? Another reason why he decided Himiko would stay at Yu was to keep an eye on her. As long as he knew where she was, Izuku wouldn't need to worry about her shape shifting into someone close to him. That was the plan, but he still felt uneasy. And on top of that, the thought that he betrayed his girlfriends again constantly hammered in his head. Yes, he was kidnapped. Yes, it has been done against his will. The problem was that at some point Izuku actually liked it to some extent. Himiko wasn't nearly as skilled as the girls, and she didn't even compare to Nimuri, but he would be lying to himself if he said he didn't enjoy at least some of it. In fact, he had been repeating this to himself lately. Himiko was a villain deceiving, and she only thought about hurting other people. She was only pulling an act, waiting for the moment to drag him back to the nightmare that was that dark room. He was sure about that one week ago, but, bit by bit, she was eroding the wall Izuku built between them. Seeing Izuku that quiet and thoughtful wasn't a good sign, so Kayoka tried to lighten the mood a little. Man, you need to relax. R-relax? Yep, 
It doesn't needs to be, you know what, but you have been kind of on the edge lately. It isn't healthy for you to keep so many problems in your head. For a brief moment, Kyoka made him remember of what All Might said. He wasn't alone, and there was nothing wrong with asking for help. If someone could help him get over this, it was his girlfriends who always stood by his side, right? Thank you, Kyoka, everyone. I know I can always count on you. Of course you can, silly. By the way, I have something in mind, so tell me when you're free. May, I'll need your help with this, okay? Sure. Hmm, I'm curious to know what kind of plan you have, Kyoka-chan. It's nothing too complicated. Watching the girls making fun of each other and chatting normally warmed up Izuku's heart. He was surrounded by lovely girls that cared for him. He wasn't going to let Himiko ruin this. Don't you think coming all the way to their dorms just to talk is a bit too much? Tetsutetsu questioned Kendo as they walked towards the Wana dorms. I already said, you don't have to come with me, Kendo said in a slightly annoyed tone. I know. I just felt like coming too. Maybe I can take a rematch with Kirishima on that arm wrestle. You two are still on it? Yeah, we're going to the eleventh draw since I won the last one. This time I'll beat him for sure. Then he'll win the next one and you'll keep doing rematches. A true man never gives up, he shouted to the sky. Meanwhile, Kendo banned the mental image of the two guys as a couple. Takage just had to share the chart with her, and the girl simply had to show all her yaoi ships. Well, I think that everyone should at least show some concern with Midoriya's condition. Me too, but isn't the Midoriya squad a problem? Midoriya squad? Yeah. The girls from want to form some kind of force shield around this dude. It's more subtle now, but it's real. That's ridiculous. Why would they even do that? I don't know. To protect him, maybe. From what? Don't know. You ask them. You know what? Forget it. I'll just have a quick talk, really. So, this isn't a plan to get closer to Midoriya boy? Tetsutetsu asked with a teasing grin across his mouth. Can you drop this? Tsunatori was joking, I don't have a crush on him. Okay, okay, but honestly, you deny it way too much, so it makes me wonder. The reason why Kendo was so emphatic in denying she felt something for Midoriya was her secret support for Yayarazu. She couldn't bring herself to like the same guy the girl liked, even if they weren't exactly close friends. Kendo hoped to also give Midoriya at least a hint, since at her eyes he was the dense clueless type of person. Of course she wouldn't tell this to anyone, so she had to put up with her friends shipping her with the Emerald Boy, at least for now. She also wouldn't admit that she felt kinda happy that her classmates were so supportive of her finding love in her life. How to put it? She was glad they cared so much about her, even if a little too much. Arriving at the front of one of dorms, Kendo paused for a minute before entering the building. Tetsutetsu mentioned something that sounded ridiculous, but she wondered if she would find resistance as she tried to talk with Midoriya. The doors opened, and she stepped into the common room, scanning the place and searching for a mess of curly green hair. However, someone else came to her way. Hey, if isn't the class rep of 1B. Kendo-san, isn't it? The tall, muscular teen Sato saw her entering and got up to greet her and her friend with sharp teeth. Oh, hey, sorry to appear out of nowhere. I'm looking for Midoriya. Do you know if I can talk with him? Thado scratched his neck before answering. Midoriya, huh? I guess he's attending at the psychologist right now. Is it urgent? No, no, I just wanted to talk. Do you know when he'll be back? I can wait. The tall teen now seemed a little uneasy. Before he could answer, another voice sounded from a corner of the common room. Kirishima just came from the kitchen. Oh, hey, Tetsutetsu. Yo, Kirishima. The redhead quickly walked to the small group and greeted his counterpart with a strong handshake. What brings you here, man? Up to another defeat. Ha, I came here to settle this from a man to another. That we'll see. Oh, hello to you too, 1B class rep. If you're looking for Ida, he's at the library now, Kirishima waved at Kendo. She's looking for Midoriya, Sato said. Midoriya, why would you want to talk to him? 
Kendo here is worried about him, so she came to see how Midoriya boy is doing Tetsutetsu rested one arm around her shoulders, giving a light tap and grinning at the two teens with a proud look. Tetsutetsu, what are you talking out loud like this? What? Isn't it why you came? Yes, but you could have said that in a better way. Um, if you don't mind me giving my opinion, honestly you should give up on that idea. It's cool that you feel empathy for Midoriya and all but it will be better if you just let him be. Well, she wasn't expecting resistance in that way. Before she could even think of what to say, Tetsutetsu was already talking. Oi man, what's up? She just wants to talk. I get it bro, and it's nice that you're concerned. I'm just saying that you should let him sort his problems. Kendo is trying to help. There's more than one way to help, right? Oi, it's not very manly to reject someone that's being nice to you. What was that? I dare you to repeat that. By now, the two teens were pushing each other with their foreheads. Midoriya isn't even here. Why are you deciding for him? My bro had a hard time. Give the man some space. What is going on here? Todoroki just came from the kitchen and found the scene developing, so he calmly walked to the group, holding a tangerine he just peeled and eating one piece of the fruit. Todoroki, where's Midoriya? Kendo needs to talk to him. Tetsutetsu quickly redirect his attention, but Kirishima held him in place. Hey, I'm saying to leave him in peace. Is it serious? Do you really need to talk with him? Todoroki said in his normal monotone voice directly to Kendo, who got a little surprised with the sudden attention. Um, no, I was just worried that he might have something troubling him, and I thought if I could help, it's all. I see Todoroki just stared at her, eating his fruit with a serene face, though she felt like he was judging her or something like that. I don't want to offend, but you should listen to Kirishima. Right now Midoriya is going through some difficult things. Are you saying Kendo is not good enough to help him? Tetsutetsu was starting to get angry. That's not it. Addressing the issue straightforward right now could do more damage than help him. Listen here, Todoroki. All right, all right, let's not start a fight. Kendo stepped between Kirishima and Tetsutetsu, separating the two. She felt that they were about to harden themselves, and this meant a point of no return. I get it that you're all trying to help him from a way or another, but I'd like to hear from Midoriya if he doesn't want to talk about it," she said looking at Todoroki. He silently ate his tangerine, but his eyes told her things wouldn't go as she wanted. Well, you can try but don't be surprised if you fail, the girls had been even more clingy on him lately, Sato said. Wait up, this Midoriya squad thing is for real. Kind of. We all hang out with Midoriya but... There's this tiny possessive side of the girls. Okay, so Kendo wasn't expecting that outcome at all. She planned to have a simple chat with Midoriya and maybe make him more aware of Yayurazu, but she didn't think she would find so much resistance. If his classmates were that protective over Midoriya, she wondered how she would deal with the Midoriya squad while trying to talk with the boy. Was it that hard to understand that she only wanted to help? Now, more than ever, she felt the need to at least ask him if he wanted to talk about his problems, even if he said no. The problem is, she wasn't the only one. Back at 1B dorms, Tetsutetsu felt indignant with the way everyone tried to hide Midoriya from Kendo, and he didn't waste time and told everyone that was at the common room once he entered the building. Guys, you won't believe what just happened and he proceeded to tell his friends how things went when Kendo tried to talk with Midoriya. Wow, who would say that? The entire class is being jealous of Midoriya, Tsunatori said, looking at the orange-haired girl with a little bit of pity in her eyes. Isn't it a little too much, though? Awase commented, also looking at Kendo with a slightly sad face. It is, right? Why are they trying to stop her when Midoriya isn't even there? Tetsutetsu asked no one in particular. Ha, huh, I knew Todoroki was up to something. I wasn't expecting Kirishima to have the hots for Midoriya though. Hmm, sounds like an interesting ship. Kendo just waved her head and let out a tired breath. You guys are taking this way to serious, and Takage don't ship people in real life, it's weird. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Kendo Takage rested both hands on Kendo's shoulders and stared at her with an apologetic look. It must be hard to have Todoroki as competition. Kendo deadpanned at the comment and resisted the urge to hit Takage in the head, and when she thought this situation couldn't get worse, the annoying blonde made his appearance. Did I heard this right? Class 1 said Kendo isn't good enough for Midoriya. Monoma for once didn't have his usual disdain plastered all over his face while talking about the rival class. He looked genuinely offended so much that he went to Kendo and held on her shoulders, looking at her face with what Kendo understood to be determination. Don't you worry, Kendo. They won't even know what hit them. And then he turned to his other classmates, starting some kind of speech. Well, my friends, it seems that we have been underestimated again. Class 1 can say whatever they want about quirks and abilities, but stopping Kendo from finding her soulmate is beyond the limits. No, guys, seriously, stop this. She didn't find the strength within herself to raise her voice level. She's not good enough, they said. Let's prove them wrong by showing just how perfect Kendo and Midoriya are as a couple. Monoma, please shut up. This is embarrassing. You know what? They can't dismiss Kendo-chan like that, Tsunatori joined Monoma. Though I really want to see my ship sail, I'll stick with you, Kendo Takage also joined the new team. Kendo got more and more confused as her classmates gathered into a weird task force to support her non-existent love for Midoriya. Guys, guys, I think you all missed the point. I don't love him, I just... S-H-H-H-H, say no more, my dear. Heavenly justice shall be delivered upon the sinful enemies of your righteous feelings, Shiozaki said, clasping her hands and closing her eyes like she was doing some kind of prayer. Shiozaki, didn't you ship him with a Shido? It was merely an imaginary scenario. I cannot avert my eyes from the truth. Oh, I see no wait. I don't like him. Yash, everyone, I can't call myself a man if I let someone is be so unfair with my friends. Team Kendixria forward, Sunatori shouted with lots of enthusiasm and the rest of the classroom followed her. Meanwhile, Kendo felt incredibly tired. She couldn't believe in the scene developing right in front of her. This escalated quickly. How did we get to this point? Ugh, even if I have to face everyone from 1A, I need to talk with Midoriya before this turns into a huge misunderstanding. On the next days, Kendo tried to at least get to Midoriya, but found even more resistance from Class 1A. There was a barrier around the table he sat during lunch and his free time became completely occupied with something. Whenever she tried a direct approach, one of the girls dragged him somewhere. On their free time, Kendo tried to find him at the library, but there was always someone helping him the lessons. The gym was also out of question, with so many of his friends making sure no one came across him while he trained. She didn't have the boldness to ask him his phone number, so she was running out of options. Not that she could ask him anyways since Midoriya had a personal squad preventing interactions with anyone that wasn't from his class. Then what she feared started to happen. Her friends put whatever plan they formed to give her a chance with the green-haired teen. Needless to say, Kendo couldn't be more embarrassed. During lunch break, Manoma started to taunt the rival class being even more obnoxious than the usual, which was enough to make some of the students fall for it. In a matter of minutes, Kirishima and Tetsutetsu were pushing each other's hardened heads, with persons from both sides trying to separate them. When Manoma made a direct comment about Bakugo, at that moment Kendo thought hell would break loose and half of her class would end paying a visit to Principal Nezu's room. Surprisingly, the explosive teen didn't react with much physical violence, resorting to shout very bad language as loud as he could. Not only her but everyone around expected at least a food fight to take place and waited, getting ready in anticipation. Then she felt a pair of hands pushing her. Looking back she found Yanagi, ushering her to leave the place. She glanced at the tables where Class 1A was sitting, and just like she thought, someone was taking care of Midoriya. A floating limp held on the collar of his jacket, yanking him from his seat without his bodyguards noticing. He fell right on Tsunatori's backs, and the short blonde immediately dashed out of the place. No one seemed to notice his absence at the time with the huge confusion happening. 
When she noticed, Kendo was already outside the building, under the shadow of a tree, and Sunatori turned around a corner bringing with her Midoriya, who was holding on her horns trying not to fall since the shorty girl was pretty fast. She made a sudden stop, almost launching him from her backs. He would have hit the tree face first if Kendo didn't help him stop. Tsunatori then winked to Kendo and gave a thumbs up, leaving the scene as fast as she came. So now Kendo was alone with a confused Midoriya leaning on her arms. He might have noticed the proximity between them because he quickly jumped back, releasing her like she was on fire. Wa? What? KK Kendo-san? What is going on here? Monoma was being annoying as always, then Kaken started to swear, and then I suddenly got carried by this shorty girl and... Midoriya calm down. Don't forget to breathe. He followed her advice and took a moment to recover from his shocked state. Do you know what was that at the lunchroom, Kendo-san? Kendo hesitated a little to answer. She couldn't just tell him that her class formed some kind of plan to turn the two of them into a couple, right? Um... I'm not sure, but it must be Monoma again. Sometimes he drags the others with him in this silly rivalry. I see. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm aware he can be quite handful, but he's a good person deep inside. She was already used to apologize for Monoma's actions. You don't have to apologize. That's just the way he is, right? Besides, I don't see any problem in a friendly rivalry. Really? I thought you guys from 1A were tired of him already. Well, I'm sure everyone feels like that to some extent, but how can I say? It's more fun when there's a challenge. This caught Kendo off guard. She didn't expect the boy to be so positive about it. By now she understood that 1A and 1B were sworn rivals and the only exception was her being friends with Yayurazu. Since she was here with him, she might use that to her advantage. So. Um, Midoriya, how are you doing lately? Huh? Me? Fine, I guess. Oh, good to hear that. I was... I was worried that you might have some... problems going through your head. You know, with all that happened lately, ahaha. Uh, Kendo was very unsure about how to approach the subject. Maybe Todoroki was right, and a direct approach could end being a bad choice. Midoriya might not want to talk about it, even less with someone he barely knew. All that. Um, I noticed you looked a little down recently. This is kind of expected, but I wondered if maybe you wanted to talk about it and you know what, forget it. You don't need to tell me if you don't want and no, wait, I mean, Erm, I'm okay with talking about this. Really? Yay, if you don't bother to listen to me, that is. Sure. I don't mind, not a single bit. Is it all right for you though? We, we barely know each other, I mean. I guess it would be better to talk with someone I'm not so close to. Well, then I'm all ears, Kendo leaned on the bark, giving the boy all her attention. Can I ask why you chose to keep this girl in UA? I know just a few details about the deal the principal made, but the final decision was yours, right? Midoriya also leaned on the tree, keeping a safe distance between them. Yeah, since Himitoga knows a lot about the underground criminals and the League of Villains, she is a person of interest and a target to a lot of bad people, so she surrendered to protect herself. I get it, but why here at UA? And couldn't the police get the information by themselves? She, she's a dangerous person. Detective Tsukachi commented that are many ways to extract information but she was willing to tell everything she knew as long as we met all her conditions. One of them was becoming a student. Not exactly. So what? Don't tell me she wanted to glue on you or something. That would be, Kendo looked to the boy and her tone of joke died instantly. Crazy. Crazy is a good way to describe her. Even knowing she held you captive for so long, Principal Nezu agreed with that? Yes, it was necessary but you must be on the edge all the time. No offense, but in your place, I would probably have nightmares for weeks. Sometimes, it's less frequent than I expected. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. It's okay, really. After what I went through, it can't be helped. Anyway, it's something I have to deal with. What do you mean? Don't you want her to be locked into a cell forever? I suppose. 
But before that, I want to get over this feeling. Get over? Are you talking about some kind of phobia or something like that? You could say that. He looked at the distance for as he talked as if his mind was wandering through his memories. The day she showed herself I, I had a panic attack in front of everyone. Sometimes I still expect my friends to smile at me with a fanged grin. I know she can't use her powers or hurt me still. You feel insecure deep inside. That's why you accepted this. To get over the fear you feel of her? Yes, I know it sounds stupid, but... Stupid? To me, it is the bravest thing someone could do. It takes a lot of courage and strength to face what you fear like this, even more considering you were with her for three weeks. I wonder what she did during all this time. Kendo was completely honest with him. The last part was more like she asked herself. Didn't they tell you? Huh? Tell what? Midoriya stopped for a moment as if he was considering something inside his head. This made Kendo equally curious and worried. Something happened and the teachers decided to not talk about it, so it probably was something very serious. Midoriya looked at her again, still a little hesitant. During, during these three weeks, Hamiko, she tortured me, both physically and mentally. To say Kendo was shocked was an understatement. She covered her mouth and she felt some droplets form into the corners of her eyes. Her first instinct was to hug the green-haired teen as hard as she could. To think someone of her age went through such a terrifying experience. Oh my, Midoriya, I'm so sorry. I didn't have idea. I, I shouldn't have asked and... I, I, it's okay, Kendo-san, don't feel as sorry. The teachers kept that a secret so there was no way you could know about it. Midoriya was stiff like a statue. He wasn't expecting this hug. Kendo finally noticed his nervousness and let go of him, faster than she thought she should. She was sure she had a faint blush on her cheeks right now, just like him. So, she did this to you for three weeks. I can't even imagine how terrifying it was to you. The cutting and stabbing were a constant pain but, honestly, the worst part was that she could change her form. I lost my head sometimes. Midoriya looked depleted of his life force and she blamed herself for this. Kendo wanted to help but she was making him replay all these traumatic memories. She had to do something about it but she couldn't even show a comforting smile because just listening to him made her heart break into tiny bits. She didn't know what to say, yet she had to say something, anything to at least make him feel better. She can shapeshift, that's why you're so nervous around everyone. All your friends want to help you, but it's hard because deep inside you still fear that they'll transform into her. Exactly. Sai, I didn't want to make anyone around me more concerned, so I tried to do this all by myself. But then I ended making them worry because of that and it is slowly turning into a vicious cycle. Kendo let that sink in for a moment. Maybe she should just give him some space as Kirishima said. That is, until I ended here with you. Huh? With me? Yeah. It's not that I don't appreciate all the support everyone is giving me. No offense, but since we're not that close, I kind of feel more at ease with you. I never talked about these things with anyone like this beside the psychologist. And of course, I didn't manage to open up so much. So, what I'm trying to say is, thank you I guess. Oh, oh, it's okay, I'm glad I can at least do this for you. It's been some time that I wanted to talk with you, Midoriya. Really? Kendo froze for a moment. Ah, uh, shit, I said without thinking. Why, yeah, since you came back, I noticed that you looked a bit D-down so I wondered if I could do something to help. Oh well, I'm making more people worry about me. Don't feel bad about that. It's normal to worry about someone we care. The words came out so naturally that only after Kendo said them, she realized they might have another meaning in this conversation. Someone you care about, thank you again, Kendo-san. You seem to be the only one from 1B that doesn't get all worked up with this competition between the classes. They are too serious sometimes, but everyone has some level of admiration for you guys, I included, especially for you Midoriya. She was having serious problems with thinking before speaking. Midoriya scratched the back of his neck. Admire, I don't know about that. I feel like I don't deserve so much attention. You do deserve it, trust me. 
Maybe she was too energetic to answer him as he looked startled. I mean since you entered UA, you have been surprising everyone. Starting with that zero pointer from the entrance exams. Hey, it looks so distant now, yet you talk like it was a great deal. Back then I could barely use my quirk and I ended with both legs and an arm completely useless. If it wasn't for your Araka, I might not even be here. And look how far you've got already. If I'm not mistaken, you only got your quirk now. I had years to get used and learn about mine and honestly, you made much more progress than me or anyone I know. Isn't that something to admire? Probably, but I fear that this isn't enough. Everyone is giving their best. Doesn't this mean I'm only doing what's expected? Catching up because I'm late? Even if everyone thinks like that, even you, I don't. So, what do you think? Hmm, you took the more challenging way. Like, you're playing on hardcore more. Hey hey hey. Well, I always preferred to play the games on the maximum difficulty anyway. Yay. Midoriya turned to look at Kendo. She had a warm smile on her face. What? I got a laugh from you. The mission is a great success. This made Midoriya think for a moment. Since he returned, he made sure to enjoy the most of the company of his mother, girlfriends and friends, but he got so focused on getting over his fear of Himiko that he didn't remember laughing like this. A light laugh completely natural and from the bottom of his heart. Not the slightly forced ones he let out lately. Those carried a feeling of relief from being free from that nightmare, but at the same time the dreaded sensation that he could return to it, wake up in the dark again. He was laughing while he could. But right here with Kendo, he didn't feel like that. He needed to talk to her and he didn't even know it. Looking at her more closely, Midoriya started to wonder about her, mainly how her quirk worked and what kind of techniques she used, but he suppressed this side of him, not wanting to ruin the mood. He didn't even have a notebook with him anyway. Um, Kendo-san, what do you like to do on your free time? Eh? What do I like to do? Where that came from? Kendo panicked internally as she wasn't expecting him to change the subject so suddenly, even more to herself. I, if you don't want T to S say it, it's okay. I just, as since we're talking, and you went all the way here to M make me feel better then, I thought that I don't know you so well and... Kendo watched a little uneasy as Midoriya entered in a spree of muttering that she could only guess to be apologies or explanations. She wasn't used to it so seeing the boy running his mouth at high speeds was pretty surprising, to say the least. Did it always happen at 1A? My Midoriya, it's okay. You just caught me off guard. I shouldn't be so curious and really... Yeah, I'm not used to talk about myself, not so personally anyway. T then, you don't have to force yourself, you don't need to. No, I want to talk. After all, you opened up for me, and I feel like I know you better now. If that's okay to you. So, about what I like, it may be a surprise, but I love motorcycles. Motorcycles? Why, yeah, it's not very girlishly, I know, but I can't help it. What's the problem with it? It's pretty cool. Kendo looked surprised at him. You really think so? Yes. Oh, I don't know if you ever heard of him, but there's a hero from USA that has an agency with that theme. Really? What hero? The mechanic hero, Motorhead. His quirk allows him to fuse his body with machines, and he rides a really cool motorcycle. It's huge, and it has those big exhausts in the back. I think I have a picture. Midoriya said with enthusiasm as he loomed through his phone while Kendo got closer to him to see better. Before they noticed, Kendo and Midoriya were sitting with their shoulders brushing, him showing more pictures of heroes that had similar themes and her telling facts about the rides they had. Kendo already heard about some names but Midoriya was like an endless database, and he even said he didn't remember everything he had written on his notebooks. Though he had a lot to speak himself, Midoriya listened to every word she said, giving Kendo his undivided attention. When was the last time she talked with someone about her hobbies like this? Ha 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 honestly Midoriya, I didn't think you would be so nice to talk with. I think most of the people have this first impression. But I'm sure glad to be mistaken. I don't get to talk about this with the girls. 
Tetsutetsu is the only one who hears me, and his only comments are on how manly the bikes look like. I hear you. I guess May is my only partner on quirk analysis. May? Oh, oh, it's Hatsum from the support course. Oh, her. Me, Midoriya, do you? Um, could it be that you... Erm, um, do you like someone? She almost whispered the last part, looking away from him as she said that. On the other side, Midoriya went instantly red on his cheeks. Now he was caught off guard. Someone I like? Yeah, um, I'd, I h heard some rumors, but I prefer to hear it directly from you. If I'm not being too curious, that it. Suddenly, they noticed just how close they were, and they could only wonder for how long. In a second a gap appeared between them, and they were looking at anything but each other. Way to go, Kendo. He looked so happy and at ease a moment ago. He, he has a cute smile. No, no, no. At least try to get an answer from him. He might like Yairazu. But, what if he likes someone else? Should I tell her? What if, he doesn't like anyone? So, Kendo-san? Why, yes. If you don't mind me asking, what rumors did you hear? Oh, that, just some silly gossip. Something about you dating someone outside of school, but since we're at the dorm system, I know it's not true, okay? This wasn't exactly what she heard, but he didn't have to worry about this. Midoriya already had a lot to occupy his mind. Ah, just silly gossip. Phew, I thought it was something more serious. Still, people are thinking I'm seeing someone. Maybe I should be more discreet with the girls. So, about before. Ah, right, if I like someone. Um, I guess so. Ah, really? I mean, it is to be expected, haha. <laughs> P probably, right? How? How is she like? It's her, right? For some reason, Togek's Yaoi ships came to her mind. Why, yes, it's a girl. Midoriya nodded his head vigorously. I am totally fine with others' preferences, really. A girl, it's definitely a girl. Okay then. Um, how is she like? I have to at least get a hint. There aren't many girls in his class. Shit. How will I describe everyone? Ugh, this could lead to problems in the future. Wait, maybe not. I doubt Kendo-san would spread it, but if everyone thinks I just like one person it'll be easier to keep the secret. I'll just need to be more careful. Hum, I don't want to pick one but... She is? Very smart. She seems a little crazy, but she's a nice person. Oh cool, is there something specific that you like in her? Her eyes, and her hair is pretty too. Smart, pretty eyes, and he likes her hair? If he could be just a little more specific, Yairazu-san, I think you might find your prince. Ah, oh, thank you Izuku. Out of nowhere a head with blonde hair tied into two messy buns poked around the tree, looking down at the two. Kendo felt a chill run through her spine as she looked at Himiko and her brain was screaming at her to enter in battle mode, but another thought delayed it. Her eyes darted to Midoriya, seeing him at the corner of her vision field. He looked frozen for a moment, but he quickly recovered, much to her relief. Both of them got up and took some steps away from the tree, watching carefully as the blonde appeared fully and rested on the large trunk. My, my, isn't it too much overreacting? Himiko said with a slightly annoyed look. You were... What are you doing here? Kendo cut Midoriya. Her tone was slightly harsh. Huh? I could ask you the same. Ah, uh, what is your name anyway? Itsuka Kendo, Hero Course, Class 1B. Oh, so you're a friend of these guys making a mess at the lunchroom. Seriously, Izuku, you should see the war zone this place is going to be. Shouty Kun was about to do something bad to the blonde boy who couldn't shit his mouth, Midoriya, and Kendo instantly recognized who she was referring to. Anyway, I asked you a question. And I asked you back. You answer me first. But you're much more suspicious than me. What do you mean by suspicious? Arg, another question. Let's see, your class causes a huge confusion, Izuku goes missing, and while everyone is busy at the lunchroom you're here with him, doing whatever you were doing under a tree, all alone, so isn't it suspicious? We were just talking and, it's okay, Kendo-san, she likes to mess with everyone Midoriya held an arm up. 
he wasn't going to let Himiko keep with her little games. Izuku, you hurt me that way, Himiko dramatically held on the tree trunk. Answer her. Why are you here? Since you asked so nicely. Well, while everyone was distracted, I saw someone take you away. I think it was the short girl with the horns. I decided to follow you. And you didn't show up until now? Why? Oh no, the girl was pretty fast. I lost you after she left the building, so I was looking around until now. Midoriya wasn't sure if he could believe in her words, but what other choices he had. Anyway, Izuku, you don't have to be so shy talking about me. About you? When did I ever- Hey, wait up, I wasn't talking about you. But you said smart, a little crazy but a nice person, and that you liked her eyes and she had a pretty hair. It can only be me, right? In your dreams, you psycho. Ah, my aching heart skips a beat every time you say these lovely words. Leave Midoriya alone. It's more than obvious he doesn't like you. Kendo took a step ahead and stood by Midoriya's side. Himiko stopped her dramatic scene and looked at her with a bored face. Huh? What do you know? Um, Kendo, wasn't it? Hmm, ponytail too. Tisk. I know he doesn't like you and that you're nothing more than problems in his life. Kendo stared at her with confidence in her eyes until Himiko started to laugh. Really now? Izuku, who is this girl? She doesn't know what she's talking about. Ha 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 ha. Me, should I tell her? Don't even think about it. Midoriya had a darker look in his eyes now, which made Kendo worry for him again. What kind of secret could exist between him and this mad girl? But if I don't, she'll keep going around talking shit about what she doesn't know. I have to. You have to stay quiet. We agreed on that, remember? Just keep her out of this. His eyes focused on her figure, so much that Kendo thought he might set her on fire with heat vision or something. Okay, as you command, my master Himiko made a mocking bow and held a devilish smile. But I'm curious, if it wasn't me, who is this girl you like? Bobby, why do you care? Why should I even tell you? He was a bit nervous now, Kendo could sense. I'm a curious girl. Oh, I know, should I try to guess? I have a lot of leads, so I might point the right one, don't you think? Let's see, is it Ak? Patsum, he didn't shout or whisper. No stuttering or hesitation. He just said it plain and clear, more to Kendo rather than Himiko. The orange-haired girl simply looked at him, hiding the small feeling of disappointment she felt behind her eyes. She felt like this for Yayurazu, of course. This was the reason she asked him that from the beginning, surely. Oh, Busty Chan, guess I can't compete with her, if you get me, Himiko patted at her chest with a mocking smile. Well, if I was you too, I'd return to the lunchroom before people start to suspect of something. The lunch break is almost over, you know. See you in the class, Izuku, she said before she left the scene, having the nerve to wink at him. This left Kendo and Midoriya alone again. So, Hatsum san I don't know her much I trust, she's a nice person. If you like her. Yeah, she's awesome. I'm sorry you got to tell me in that way. Don't be. It's all her fault. There was a weird silence between them before Kendo thought about something else to say. I, if you ever feel you need to talk, I'm always open to hearing you. It's okay, I don't want to bother you. She felt like holding his hand, but hesitated when it was millimeters apart from hers instead of resting it on his shoulder. You won't. And you can come to me if you want to train or do anything else. Thanks, Kendo-san. I, if you feel like, you can come to me any time too. I'll look forward to it. Um, it pains me to admit, but that crazy is right. We should go back now. Even if it didn't end as she planned, Kendo was happy with herself and for Midoriya. Despite the appearance of the current main problem in his life, he looked more bright and lively, like the Midoriya she was used to seeing, the Midoriya she knew. Well, now Kendo knew him a lot better. There was no way these rumors about the green teen could be true. He was too sweet to do. Those things she heard from Takage, though the green-haired girl heard them from some senpai. They didn't have any idea of who he was or how kind he was or how heartwarming was to be at his side. She understood better now why Yayarazu apparently liked him, and Hatsum was lucky that he held her dear to his heart. 
It was really big luck to be the one Midoriya liked, so she couldn't help but wonder. Is there someone like this just waiting to tell me? Kendo slowly waved her head. No, I can't worry about these things now. There are more important matters that I have to focus on still. Her eyes wandered to the green-haired boy walking by her side. The green-haired boy that suddenly got pulled aside from her. On the next moment she found a pair of brown eyes looking straight at her soul. Deku-kun, are you okay? Where have you been? Yuraraka looked at him with a sweet and caring expression that turned into mild anger when she looked again at the orange-haired girl. Were you with her all this time? Did her eyes deceive her or Kendo detected some jealousness coming from the brunette? Not only from her, but also from the others slowly walking to them. Yes, Kendo-san and I were talking. We met each other outside by coincidence. Coincidence. Yes, coincidence. Itsuka Kendo. You are Yuraraka, right? Kendo offered her hand politely, doing her best to look neutral but friendly. She smiled nervously as the brunette took more time than she expected to return the gesture. Yuraraka Ochako. You're from 1B, right? Yes, 1B class rep. Then could you do something about that Manama guy? He's really annoying. I know he can be hard to deal with. It's just his way. Yuraraka was about to say something, but whatever it was she decided to keep herself, that is after Midoriya gave her a meaningful look. Well, it's not like we don't have someone similar at our class. Sorry for Bakugo barely exploding Monoma's face, it's just his way. Yuraraka turned, and she was already leaving when Kendo called Midoriya one last time. See you another time, Midoriya. See you too, Kendo-san. From the corner of the hallway, some of the students from 1B cheered for her, while in the group of 1A there were some unspoken curses and bad language. I knew it, we can't trust anyone here. Ochako, calm down, it was just a coincidence. Coincidence or not, she was alone with him. Who knows what she might have done in that time, Momo. Momo pinched the bridge of her nose, then once again tried to reason with Ochako. Even if it hurts me to admit it, Kendo isn't nearly as thirsty as any of us. But still, she could be trying to confess to him. She might not have the hots for him, but Izuku is still cute and charming. Yeah, yeah, I hear you, but I'm sure he's not her type. There is no not my type when it comes to Izuku there is, Mina pointed out. None of them disagree. Relax, my friends, Izuku is safer than a gold bar in a vault. They group jumped a little when Himeko suddenly made her presence noticed. What are you doing here and what are you talking about? Mei was quick to push her back a little. Even if I say I doubt you'll hear me over all this hostility. The group let out a collective sigh. We're listening. See, much easier, isn't it? Ponytail 2 and Izuku were just chatting, really. She likes motorcycles and they talked a lot about it. You would be impressed with the number of heroes with that theme. Anything meaningful? Achako ushered her. Hmm, besides Izuku talking about our special date Sai no, nothing, she said and watched amused as the girls tensed up, glaring daggers at her just because she mentioned her date with him, so she decided to add gasoline to the fire. Oh, just one more tiny thing. Apparently, Izuku doesn't trust any of you to open up his troubled heart. What did you say? They shouted in unison and Ochako stepped forward, grabbing the collar of Himiko's uniform. You'll tear it apart, I already told you that, Ochako-chan. Repeat that, I dare you to repeat that in my face. Ochako calmed down and, she's messing with us, Kayoka. She quickly turned back then faced the blonde again. Himiko had a smug grin plastered on her face. I won't take any more of your shit, repeat that and see what happens. Her fanged grin widened and her voice remained level. Huh? Didn't you listen? Izuku doesn't trust any of you to open his heart. His words, not mine. Something about, how was it again? Oh yeah, the fear of your pretty faces turning into bright yellow eyes and a nice white fanged grin. Tisk? And whose fault it is? Can you guess? Well, let's see. Who tortured Izuku please raise your hand? She slowly raised a hand. So it leaves me and me. Himeko didn't have time to laugh as her backs met with the wall pretty fast. 
You can't leave Yue, right? Yes, that's part of the deal. If you float away, you die out of air, cold, or electrocuted. Hmm, I don't know. Why don't you try and tell me after? Ochako brought a fist back, but Tsuyu held it with her tongue. Mei and Mina had to force her away from Himiko, who kept laughing all the time. Ochako-chan, you're so fun to tease you make it really hard for me to leave my old habits. She became more serious now. But seriously, take better care of Izuku. I might not be around when Ponytail 2 or someone else makes the next move. But you said, I said Ponytail 2 just chatted with him. What happens after that I don't know. Let's not forget that it all happened while her class was distracting everyone. I can tell from kilometers away when someone is trying to drag my attention. So if I were you, I'd keep my eyes open Himiko turned around, but before leaving she continued. Unlike me you can't afford to lock him, can you oh Chako chan And she waved a hand, skipping through the hallway. Meanwhile, Ochako shook with anger. Ochako-chan. She took a deep breath before answering. I'm okay, Tsu. She's messing with me, trying to say that we're alike or something. Pumph! Good riddance, Toru said, then turned to her friends. Girls, do you think she said the truth about Izuku? That he doesn't trust in us? Ribbit. Considering she can technically take the form of any of us, it is to be expected Izuku would have some difficulty, well, looking at us the same way. That's wrong, Deku-kun. Izuku still loves us the same way he always did. That wouldn't change, not a single bit, never Ochako assured her friends, and maybe herself. I didn't believe in a single word that Toga said. She just wants to torment us as much as she wants to torment him. So you're okay with Kendo? Momo had to ask. That, we'll see. Like it or not, it is a little suspicious. I want to trust you, Momo, because honestly, I can't trust in her. Meanwhile, at the rival class, Kendo was being swarmed by her classmates and being showered with questions, so much that she had to use her quirk to get some space. All right, silence everyone or else, I'll hit you all like Monoma and silence is what she got. Tsunatori stepped forward and started to talk despite the threat. Kendo-chan, come on, you have to tell us. Well, at least tell me what happened. Oi, Tsunatori, I helped too. I want to know, Tetsutetsu shouted from the back of the crowd. Since I created this master plan, it's obvious I get to. Shush, Monoma, I'll really hit you, Kendo wasn't joking now. There's nothing to hear, guys. We just talked. But what were the topics? Was there any hot topic? Takage asked and joked. Did you make any progress with him? Oase was the next. Is Midoriya Izuku as astonishing and charming as you dreamed about Kendo-san? Who said I dream about him, Shiozaki? Is it too early for dreaming? Fukudashi asked Yanagi. How should I know? All I know is that my ship is sailing forward, Kendixriya. Tsunatori beamed and her classmates were about to follow her, but then they saw Kendo raising a fist. This was a clear sign to stop. For the last time, I don't have a crush on Midoriya. I just wanted to talk to him because he looked like he needed help. And I was right, he's having a hard time. So now the last thing he needs is an entire class making fun of his love life. Kendo-chan, we're not making fun of him. I mean, I don't know about the others, but I honestly wanted you two to be together. Sunatori, where that came from anyway? Well... The way you looked at him that day, and looking how much you worried about him, I just thought that you'd be happy with him. Are you sure you don't feel nothing? There was nothing but the truth and concern for her friend in Sunatori's eyes. Kendo looked at her other classmates and everyone agreed with the short blonde. I admit that I thought it would be fun to watch, but I think you'd be a good couple, Kurowaro said. I'm with him. We all want the best for you, Honkuni added. Whoever you choose will support you, Kendo-san. Unless the guy is a douche, then we beat him up, Tsuburaba said. Wait, what if it's a girl next time? Bondo inquired the spiky brown-haired teen. Then one of the girls beat her up? Since you spoke, there's this girl from the third year that... Stop, don't add a single word, please, before Takage could implant any more crazy ideas, Kendo interfered. 
I appreciate that you care for me so much. Really, thank you guys, but I'm more than capable of dealing with my love life, okay? So you're not giving up on Midoriya, Tsunatori asked with hope in her eyes. For the love of I swear I'll hit someone. I don't have a... All right, everyone, move to the locker rooms. We have hero training to do. Vlad Sensei just poked his head in the room and shouted, completely ignoring the fact that he was late. Everyone quickly left the classroom, Kendo being the last one. She was already feeling tired. Two days without notices from Midoriya. Should I have given him my phone number? Too forward, right? Ugh, Sunatori was so stubborn that now I can't think about giving my number without being embarrassed. Friends also exchange numbers, right? Kendo fidgeted with the tip of her ponytail, looking through the window. She told him to call her if he wanted to talk, but she didn't exactly give him a way to call her. She didn't know when he would call her either. Would he take too long? What if now he felt better and could talk with someone else? So their nice time together was a one-time thing. We could meet today, she muttered to herself. Meet? With who? She thought she muttered to herself. Takage? Kendo got surprised with the green-haired girl suddenly invading her bubble. Oi, no talking during class, Vlad scolded the two from his place at the blackboard. Takage then changed to whispering. Sorry to scare you, but you seemed really far. This isn't you, you know. I was, just thinking. Oh, thinking I get it. You get it? Yep. Daydreaming is something very common for those lost in love. Takage put a hand in her chest and raised the other in a dramatic fashion. Don't jump to conclusions. We already discussed this. Yes, yes. Oh, the denial. You were so distant I can only wonder where your head was, though I have a good idea. Takage, I thought you dropped this topic already. And right when I did you appear with that love-struck cute face, can you blame me? Takage Kendo, if you're comfortable with chatting during the lesson, then you might find it easy to do an essay about it, right? Why, yes, Sensei, said both girls. After class, Kendo tried to find Midoriya just to see if he was doing fine. If they got to talk a bit, she wasn't complaining. She tried the library since he had lessons to catch up. Maybe she could lend him a hand. She entered the quiet place and there was Midoriya, sitting all alone in a table with a couple of books scattered and another one he currently buried his face on. Kendo was on her way to him when a pink hair with horns poking from it came in front of her. Oh sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. Judging by the upside-down book that was covering her face, Kendo doubted it. It's okay, I was kinda distracted too. Ashido quickly glanced at the direction Kendo looked, and the orange-haired girl was sure she saw pink eyebrows furrow a bit. So, Kendo-san, isn't it? I'm kinda curious, what brings you here since you're one of the best of your class? I doubt you have to retake tests like me. Well, I like to study, which is why I do well at the tests. Studying before the tests also helps with not retaking them. She didn't want to make Ashido angry or anything, but it was clear she was forcing this talk to stall her. You're probably right. Well, since you're here, can you help me with a question I have been struggling with? It's really quick. Kendo stopped Ashido from shoving the book in her face, giving the pinquette a quick look. I don't think you need to study for advanced integral calculus. At least not now. Ashido's frown was a little more visible. Oh, silly me, that's why I wasn't getting any of this, ahaha. Sigh, you're not here to read a book either, are you? And what if I'm not? Then I have to ask, what do you want here? It's a hard guess, but I'd say the same as you. The simultaneous glance confirmed her theory. Kendo took a step aside, but Ashido came into her way again, showing a waverly smile. Excuse me. Ah, sorry about that. Another step, another block. Ahem, I'm trying to get to the tables, so if you could please move. Pahaha, ha, that ain't happening. Kendo didn't want to make enemies with Class 1A, but this girl was asking for a hit. Suddenly, Kendo felt an arm wrapping around her own, dragging her inside the library and making her bump on a shido. Then she noticed a familiar black hair in a bob cut. Kodai? Kendo, good thing I found you here. I need you to help me with some problems. Kodai gave Kendo a look that made her understand what she planned. 
Kodai was just passing by when she looked the pink-skinned girl getting in Kendo's way. A second glance and she spotted Midoriya, more than enough for her to connect the dots. Thanks, Kodai Kendo said in a low tone. Thank me later, after you talk with him. I, I don't have a crush on him. I know, just go there already. Kendo wasn't sure about what the smile Kodai showed meant, but she was glad for the little help. That is, until she tripped into something. If it wasn't for Kodai, she would hit the floor face first. Looking around they didn't see anything or anyone nearby. With a double take both girls noticed a set of clothes floating at one of the desks. She might be invisible, but the way the jacked floated told them that this person was looking exactly in the opposite direction, a weak and ironic try to act natural. Kendo considered saying something but a small pull on her arm made her turn away. Unfortunately, when they turned around Midoriya was already taken, being dragged somewhere with his books by another pink-haired girl. Her next attempt, the gym. Knowing Midoriya he was going to spend some extra minutes training to compensate the lost time, and she guessed right. She hoped to join him on whatever exercise he was doing and take the opportunity to chat a little. It was nice to train with some company. The problem was that he already had company. The moment she opened the door, her eyes scanned for a green mane, and she found it running treadmills. On one side, purple hair with two small bangs, and on the other, spiky red hair. Okay, he will have to stop some time. As is she had triggered a trap, from now on, every time she tried to get near Midoriya, someone took the place she was aiming for. If it wasn't Kirishima, it was Gyro. If it wasn't Gyro, it was Sato. If it wasn't Sato, Ojiro appeared, making it impossible to her to get within five meters from Midoriya. After a long time being passively blocked, Kendo decided to just butt in without any excuses, but someone else saw that. Suddenly she felt someone holding on her wrist, and she turned around to see the tailed teen from 1A. Kendo-san, what a surprise seeing you here. Not much, I came to train a lot, actually Ojiro let go of her, but it didn't look like he would let her simply pass. It must be because we train at different times. Well, since you're here, why don't we spar a little? Maybe later, I have to go somewhere and I have to insist, he said already pushing her to the ring. Being a martial artist, I can't miss a chance to fight someone with the name Battle Fist. She was about to protest, but then something came to her mind. If I win, you let me go. Ojiro took his fighting stance and held a confident look. Sure, but don't be too relaxed. This might be a spar, but I don't plan to go E. Kendo made a really quick dash forward and threw her fist forward, making it big right before the impact. Ojiro barely had time to use his tail as a shield and ended falling not too far out of the ring. There, attack of opportunity. Good fight, see ya. Wait just a minute, I wasn't well prepared. Best of three. She let out a sigh and quickly glanced at where Midoriya was, currently lifting weights. Then come on. This time Ojiro attacked first, chaining his punches with powerful tail whips, enough to make Kendo step back as she used her large hands as shields. You won't win if you keep backing away like that, kendo said. I know, she finally reached the place she wanted but I'm planning to make this quick. Ojiro leaped high and spun, landing a powerful strike with his tail, only to be held by Kendo's big hands. She didn't even wait for him to land and swung the teen over her head, slamming him out of the ring. She didn't even use her strength, she was aiming for the technical win. And with that she ran out of the ring, ignoring whatever Ojiro was saying about another rematch but she a little late as she spotted her objective being dragged out of the gym by the purple-haired girl. Enough was enough, and after taking a shower, Kendo headed to the one adorns. Tsunatori was almost going on all fours to follow her friend's rushed steps. Kendo-chan, what will you do now? I don't know, but I have to talk to him. Did something happen? No, I just you know what? I want to see Midoriya and that's it. I was a little worried about him, but now it's more because they didn't let me. She sounded mildly annoyed and angered. You didn't get to see Kendo like this a lot. They? You mean the girls that hang with him? No, I mean the entire class. 
I don't care about what they said before, we had a good time, and it is obvious that it did some good to Midoriya. He trusts me so there's no problem in we spending some time together again, right? Right, but Kendo-chan. What? The way you're talking, and the way you're acting too, it makes it look as if you really liked him. Kendo stopped briefly, then turned to her friend. Whatever you say, I'm not going to stress over it anymore. Tsunatori could swear she saw a smile form in her lips before Kendo resumed her quick walk to the building of the rival class. Just this time the blonde decided to watch from afar. Kendo just arrived in front of the building and someone already appeared to get in her way. Good afternoon, Kendo-san. Should I understand that your visits will be more frequent from now on? Todoroki said in his neutral voice. If I say yes, is there a problem, Todoroki-san? I'm not against working with other students. Just try to limit this to hero classes. Tisk, I'll be straight then. I want to see Midoriya. Can you call him, please? Todoroki rested on the wall beside the door and folded his arms. I'm afraid not. Come on, can we skip this? It won't do any harm if we just talk. I'm not so certain. How can you be so sure? Because we did that already. In fact, Midoriya looked a lot better after. Didn't you notice? The half-hot, half-cold teen thought about it for a moment. Midoriya did look a little better recently. Still, it could be something else. I'm going to ask that you leave if this is your only objective here, Kendo-san. I'm going to see him whether you like it or not, Todoroki-san. I'd like to see that. Oi, shitty half and half, where's your trash, ha? Huh? Aren't you from the extra class? Who are you calling extra, Kendo said, even more annoyed. Isn't it obvious, he said pointing at her. What do you want here? Got the wrong way to your own place? She wants to see Midoriya Bakugo. Ha, Deku? Why in the world would she want to see that shitty nerd? Hey, don't talk like that about him, Kendo took some steps ahead, but froze once Bakugo turned around and shot a flaming glare at her. He walked towards her, stopping about a meter away. What was that? Don't, don't say these things about Midoriya. He's a very nice person. Tusk. Deku this, Deku that, he scoffed under his breath. I don't get why everyone is so worried about Deku, even less you, someone who barely knows him. So I'm going to give you an advice, don't waste your pity with that useless trash, he said lifting the yellow plastic sacks on his hands and then walked past her. He's not an useless trash, she made Bakugo stop. Midoriya is an awesome person. He's going through a lot now and I want to help him recover. The only useless thing I see here is taking the trash out. What? Now he was mad. A little bit further and the trash bags would be blasted into tiny bits, but that would result in more work for the blonde, so he miraculously controlled his temper, taking a very long and deep breath. Listen up, fat hands. You'll only waste your time with that shitty virgin. Not that I care. You all can just drop dead with him that I won't give a damn. Trash belongs to trash so you can look for him somewhere else. Shitty Deku left with stupid sound girl anyway. And one more thing when you see that shitty copycat, tell him that. He took a deep breath in. Die. Kendo watched in a mix of astonishment and intimidation as Bakugo stomped away to take out the trash. She turned to Todoroki, still leaning on the wall with the same serene face. Was he already used to this? You heard him. Midoriya is not here. But you should really leave him alone. As I said before, I'm going to see him whether you like it or not. So Kendo walked away, still hearing the blonde shouting profanities to the foundations of the world. Midoriya wasn't here so where could he possibly be? The places she knew he used to go were already out of question. She didn't know him that much anyway. Where? Where could Midoriya be? Then, out of the blue, rather out of the dark, Kurawaro appeared to her. Kendo. Kurawaro? Sai, how many times do I have to tell you to stop sneaking around? This is who I am, Kendo. I can't deny my twisted nature. Can't you make an effort? We're not even training. Anyway, you're looking for the Midoriya boy, right? He was around the support course building not long ago. Huh? How did you know that? 
One, you walked off really fast and you looked annoyed. Two, Kodai told me what happened at the library. Three, Tsunatori was running around saying to everyone that you were out to fight for your love or something like that. Well, Kendo did say she didn't care, but this was too much. She would have a little talk with Tsunatori later. I see, thanks, Kiriwaro. Wait a minute. Is this for real? You're really falling for Mr. Break My Own Arms? She took a moment of hesitation to answer. No, that's not it. I guess, if you say so, I'm still going to make fun of you, though. It's part of your twisted nature. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And then Kendo headed to the support course classes. Why would he come here was a mystery to her. What could possibly have his interest around here? Oh, right, Midoriya's crush. The girl stopped in her tracks, feeling all her eagerness drain from her body. What was the point? Maybe after talking with her, Midoriya found the courage he needed and decided to confess to Hatsum. If she said yes, if Hatsum decided to accept Midoriya's feelings, where this left her, exactly. Wait, wait, Yayurazu. How will she deal with it? I, I wanted to help her too, right? So, why do I feel so sad? She's my friend, sure, but it shouldn't be hurting so much. Her mind replayed the words Tsunatori said to her about her being happy. I wanted Yayurazu to be happy, right? That was the plan. So, why? She shook her head and quickly slapped her cheeks. Whatever was the outcome, whatever waited for her once she found him, she wanted to talk to him again. It was perfectly fine to chat with your friends. They didn't have to be in a relationship to have a good time together. She was okay just being his friend. Kendo entered the now empty building walked through the hallways. The yellow and orange lights of the ending day shone through the windows, almost matching her hair color. Every step that took ahead was a change in her resolve to see the end of this. Should she really see him, or should she just give up and let him be? She heard something coming from one of the rooms at the end of the hallway. The last step told her so see him. Kendo hesitated a little, then some more, holding back her own hand before it could press the small panel to open the metallic door. What was she supposed to say now? What should she say if she found Hatsum with him? Would she say yes? Would she deny him? What if she already said no and Midoriya was now heartbroken? It might be just a school crush, but these things had a different weight for some people, and he did look to be the sensitive type of guy. Maybe she could use that to make him and Yayorazu closer to each other. Maybe someone else could get closer to him. She pressed the button with sudden boldness. The door quickly slid open and she found, well, she found Midoriya. As she expected, he had some company and yes, it was Hatsum. The problem started on the third person, the girl with purple hair from his class. What else? Well, how about the three of them being stark naked? Oh wait, there was a very little portion of his lower body that was covered with a red blanket. So there they stood, wide-eyed, frozen probably due to the shock and staring at her, while Kendo stared back at them. What could they possibly be doing at such suspicious positions, lying on a bed in the middle of a white room? Her overloaded brain prevented Kendo from perceiving any further details, and she did the only logical thing. S is sorry for interrupting, scream and run, the only possible reaction. A little earlier that afternoon. Kayoka, what's up with the rush? Izuku asked her as she kept pulling him around. I'll explain later, just follow me. Can I at least know what is this all about? Remember when I said I had an idea to help you out? Oh, you mean to help me relax? Exactly. It took a little for May to set everything up, but we're all ready now. Ready? For what? Hehe, <laughs> it's a surprise. He couldn't help but feel a little nervous about this. Every time the girls came with a surprise, well, it was a huge surprise indeed. Since he didn't have another option, Izuku just followed Kayoka to wherever she was leading him. It couldn't be anything bad for him that he was sure of. When he noticed Kayoka and he walked through the empty hallways of the support course building. This was a known way, and as he expected, they arrived at the secret room. Kayoka pressed the small button on the wall and the door opened, revealing May. She was tinkering with something on her lap. May, didn't you say it was done? 
Oh, Kyoka, yes, it is done. I'm just making some adjust. It better not explode, really. It won't, trust me. The two entered and joined the pink-haired girl as she finished her adjusts. Izuku sat on the bed and just waited, tapping his foot and looking at the floor. Then he felt a hand rest on his shoulder. Kayoka gave him a reassuring look, followed by Mei. Hey, relax. You'll faint like this. Sorry, Kayoka. I'm not used to this. It isn't as if we didn't do more embarrassing things. Kayoka flicked a finger at Mei's ear for the comment. Now was not the time. Oh, Yash, it's ready. Now, Izuku, could you stand on the bed, please? Stand? For what? Wait just a little longer, my eager boy. Izuku did as she said. Kayoka-chan, music, please. Music? Izuku looked confused as he followed Kayoka with his eyes. She brought a small speaker with her, plugged a USB on it at press to play it. A slow pace and smooth music started to play. He wasn't very wise on the field so he didn't try to guess what style it was. Then, making him even more confused, May crawled on the bed and started to undress him. And May, I thought we wouldn't be D doing tea that. And we won't, honey, she booped his nose playfully. It just happens that you need to take your clothes of for what we're going to do. A happy coincidence. Kayoka quickly joined her, slowly running her hands through his body, holding him from behind. Music can change your mood really fast. With the right ambient sound and stimulus, they slowly took off his shirt, brushing their fingers at his skin sometimes. We can take away all that stress that is dragging you down. His shorts came out before he could notice, and the two girls gently made him lay down in the bed with his belly down. Izuku then felt something slightly warm and slimy on his backs. Hold up, what is? It's okay, honey. Kayoka asked me to create this. It's a special gel of quick effect that helps to remove the stiffness of your muscles. The effect is better if you use the correct amount of pressure to apply it. Which is why I created this baby here, Izuku noticed that she was wearing the baby of earlier. It was a pair of sleeves that covered her arms from the hands to the shoulders, and he could make out some lines across it, so he guessed it was some kind of exo suit. She also had a small visor over one of her eyes. May continued, pointing to it. This other baby here helps me see where your body has more tension. Then my exo suit guides my hands to give you a massage while the gel acts, all backed up with lots of data about the most varied techniques. I just wanted something to pair with the playlist I selected, but May decided to do all this. That's why she took so long, Kayoka said, ruffling his green locks. You seemed so tense that I thought about what I could do to help you release this tension. Izuku then stopped to listen more carefully at the playlist Kayoka picked for him. It wasn't any music he ever heard before. Instead, it was just tranquil melodies played on bass and a guitar, along with nature sounds. Actually, some of them he was able to recognize, being used to listen to Kayoka's creations. He also focused on the warm feeling of May's hands slowly spreading the gel over his backs, rubbing his skin and pressing his tensed body at the exact places. She was taking care of muscles he didn't know were stiff, making his body feel more relaxed. In fact, he felt his mind also slowing its pace, taking more time to appreciate the special treatment the two were giving to him. Wow, you two went so far, just to make me feel better, Izuku said in a lower tone, borderline purring. Sometimes May managed to get a small moan from him. Of course, honey, you're more than worth the effort. May then started to focus more on his shoulders and arms while Kayoka worked on his feet. She didn't have high-tech support like May, but she learned a thing or another on the internet. The two girls were effectively making Izuku float into the clouds as he felt his mind get free of all the troubles that were bothering him lately. Forget about the extra homework, Hamiko being at UA, the subtle lingering anxiety he felt around the girls, especially Ochako. Forget about his own goal to overcome his fear, his duty as the heir of one for all, and the immense pressure of being the next symbol of peace. Right now, Izuku could only care about two of his lovely girlfriends and the amazing treatment they were giving to him. I could get used to this, he said, feeling his head a little light. 
He felt the warmth spread around his body and his muscles were so relaxed they felt like jelly. Oh, look, Kayoka, someone is having a good time. I can see it. I don't, Izuku, we might spoil you too much. Can you blame me? This is simply awesome. Do you more relaxed now, honey? Never been more relaxed in my life. Hmm, so you are in a good mood now? Yeah, completely. Then let me try something different. Izuku was about to ask what she meant, but the answer came quickly as he felt a new and familiar source of warmth. This softness and size he knew pretty well. He tilted his head slightly and just as he suspected, May got rid of her black sleeveless shirt and bra, deciding to use her ample bosom to continue his treatment. From behind her pink curly hair, Kayoka poked her head. Oi, May, this is not fair. I know Ochako told us to wait, but I just can't help it. I'm not talking about this. What it's not fair is you using your body like this. In front of me, above all things. Oh, well, in that case, why don't you take the opportunity? Since I'm busy with you, honey, why don't you make her feel good too? Well, after all this, it's the least I can do. I don't guarantee I'll be as good as you, though. Don't worry, honey, I'm kind of cheating. So, Kayoka, what are you waiting for? Kayoka quickly removed her shirt and bra, getting under Izuku while Mei kept pressing her bosoms on him. Her hands wandered to his lower regions, getting dangerously close to his private parts, only to move to another place. Meanwhile, Izuku took some of the gel on his hands and tried to replicate to some extent what Mei did to him, tracing Kayoka's slender figure. She moaned lightly as his hands glided from her waist to her sides, up to her chest then down to her belly, and all over again. Damn, this feels so good. You're full of talents, Izuku. I do my best. Then how about we all jump to the best part, honey? Mei was now rubbing her entire body on him, and Kayoka followed her, latching on Izuku as she could. I am with Mei. Just a little bit, Izuku. Please? Izuku couldn't help but smile. Well, since you two asked so nicely. In seconds their remaining clothes were gone, and Izuku stared down at Kayoka, a little before slowly lower himself to kiss her. It has been a long time since they did this, and he thought that after this he should call everyone, as he didn't want to be unfair. Ochako said that they would wait until he felt he was ready, and right now he was more than ready. Kayoka looked at him with expectant eyes. The way she bit her bottom lip while smiling was a clear sign she missed him as much as he missed her and the other girls. Then, the door opened. They saw Kendo. Kendo saw them. She ran away and the door closed automatically a little while after. They had a major problem now. One more for Izuku to worry about. While he felt his anxiety returning stronger than ever, he had a few words to describe how he felt right now. That's it, I'm already dead. She took a deep breath in to not lash out at her friends. It wasn't the time for an attack, even though she had all the right to have one. She told them to wait until he felt ready. At that moment, everyone would get down with him, but no, they had to make things on their own. It was this type of thing that made the devil in her left shoulder sound completely reasonable with the suggestion of getting rid of all those extras. But Ochako had to admit, it was fun to have them around. Plus, she was sure her precious Izuku wouldn't be at the level he is now with only her. It was a pain to admit, but it was the truth. So, instead of shouting like a mad woman, the brunette took many deep breaths to calm down her nerves. Kendo Itsuka from Class 1B saw her Izuku, Mei and Kayoka, butt naked and in a suspicious position, then ran away shouting. She had to think clearly and stay calm. Focus and stay calm. Stay calm, Ochako. I knew it, Momo, I knew it. Forget the deep breathing, Ochako was about to stomp a hole through the floor of Momo's room. Ochako, wait a moment, I'm sure it was a mistake. If we talk with her. Talk? Oh, I'll talk with her, sure. Just let me get my talk bat first. I don't get it, the door should open only for us, May thought out loud. Didn't you say you put a new lock? Kayoka asked the pinkette. And I did. The new system had all our biometrics recorded and should only open for us. It's one of my latest creations. One of the latest? Yes. And did you test it? 
Oh, oops. Oops, my ass. Oops is not nearly enough for this. May, do you know what this means? Someone discovered us. Ochako shook May with a considerable amount of strength. Suyu forced the brunette to let go. Ribbit, technically she could only know of Kyoka chan and Mei-chan. Whatever, Su chan Just imagine, Kendo spreads the word and all the whores from the other years decide they want a piece of him too. I hardly think Kendo-san would do that, Ochako. Once again Momo defended the orange-haired girl. She doesn't look like the type of person who gossips. Yeah, that's what you think. You don't know her that much, Momo. I trusted you when you said she was fine and look where we are now. Hold up, girl. It could have been anyone, Mina tried to reason a little. But what would she be doing at the support course building, Mina Chan? Toru asked. Kayoka was the next to speak. Should we talk about this with Nimuri? Everyone shuddered. Let's try to resolve this by ourselves. If we need her help, then we explain everything Momo said. Well, in that case, you're going to solve this, Ochako pointed to the black-haired girl. Not that I mind, but why me? You said she was fine, you know her better. Plus, it would be weird if I or May came to talk with her. Ribbit, you're the closest one to her, Momo-chan. Sigh very well, but I still think she won't do any harm. Oh, and what about Deku-kun? He was really tense again, so I used a previous version of my special gel. It was too strong, so right now he's on his bed immobilized, May answered the brunette. For a brief moment, the thought of a defenseless Izuku just lying on his bed and waiting to be taken made the group drool a bit. Meanwhile, at the 1B dorms, Pony and Takage worried for her friend as Kendo entered the building at high speeds and locked herself in her room. From the other side of the door, the shutters slowly turned into weak sobs. The girls could imagine what happened to create that outcome, and honestly, it was kind of expected. The problem was that the reaction itself was being too intense. What? Couldn't Midoriya simply say no? Did he have to reject her completely and humiliate her? Those were the thoughts crossing their minds. Kendo-chan, please let us come in. We have to talk about this. No, um, um we don't have to talk. I don't need to. What happened, happened. Kendo, come on. It's okay to be sad, but you're too deep into the sad hole. What happened? What happened? Did you confess to Midoriya and he turned you down? That's what happened. Sunatori tried to convince her friend to talk. It was usually very easy. No, Tsunatori, I didn't confess. Then you called him for a date? No. Then what happened, girl? Takage was getting more and more concerned. When Kendo stopped answering, Takage decided to act. Using her quirk, she floated a hand to the other side of the door and unlocked it. Both girls entered Kendo's room and found the redhead on the verge of tears. She always said that tears should be stored for important things, so she usually didn't cry or hid it from others when she couldn't help it. Now, seeing both friends invading her room because they were worried about her made her feel like crying out loud. After some good ten minutes, Kendo felt that she had no more tears to shed, becoming more stable and tranquil. Takage and Sunatori asked once again, Kendo, what happened with Midoriya back there? Should she tell them? It was supposed to be a private moment to the trio, and she butted in for being too eager and acting on impulse. No, wait, private or not, she doubted the school council would approve something with that level of exposure, let alone a boy with two girls, who could be his girlfriend? Or maybe the two were? Or maybe none of them was, and he was cheating on someone else? Or maybe he didn't have a girlfriend and was doing that just because he felt like it? Kendo-chan. Kendo, talk to us, girl. What the heck happened? Kendo was unsure. She didn't know what she saw exactly. It was so fast, and she didn't have time and look at the details. She could have missed something important that could explain this situation. Who was she kidding? She saw Midoriya butt naked with two girls on a bed with him. They were going to do a lot of things in there, by the way, she found them. Now that the sadness subdued, other emotions started to pop in her head. They were already there from the start, but only now she thought about it. Yes, she was sad for seeing Midoriya with someone else. 
Damn, she just realized she might like him, as in really like, and then this bomb. She also felt jealous, as there were two girls holding on the boy she liked something normal. The problem started at this point. For some reason she didn't get yet, she felt envious of the girls, and just for a moment, she wanted to be in their places with Midoriya. She didn't know what they were going to do, though she had a very good idea, some part of her deep inside wanted to do that too. She suppressed the feeling as it didn't seem the right thing to be thinking or doing at that place. Takage Tsunatori, I saw something I shouldn't have seen. Oi, hold up, it can't be that serious. Kendo-chan, what did you see? I, she couldn't do it, not to him. Midoriya confessed to Hatsum. Yo, the crazy girl from the support course? Yes, her. Did she say yes? Kendo nodded, prompting Tsunatori to give her a comforting hug. Oh, Kendo-chan, I'm so sorry for you. You ended watching it. It's okay, Tsunatori. I kind of panicked and ran away. And you know, I don't have a... I don't love him. The short blonde gave her friend another hug and rushed to the kitchen to make some hot chocolate to Kendo. Meanwhile, Takage sat by her side. Okay, spit it out. What really happened? What do you mean, Takage? A simple confession wouldn't put that hue of red in your face, even less if you don't love him. Plus, I can sort of telling when you're lying. You're always sincere, so I guess it's something huge for you to hide it. It's nothing like that, really. There's another lie. Come on, Kendo, you can trust me. I don't know, I shouldn't. How will I help you then? Kendo hesitated, but the look in her friend's face ended convincing her. Sigh, I really saw Midoriya with Hatsum, but... But... There was someone else. Someone else? Who? Amum, one of the girls from his class. I don't get it, what was the problem? Hey, don't tell me she got in your way again. Well, kind of. They were all pretty close and... Amum, I couldn't even talk to him. The lizard girl took a moment processing what Kendo said until she understood. Takage frowned in anger and crossed her arms. Tisk, then I have to add trash to the list of things Midoriya is. Not only they let the pinkette with him when they blocked you all this time, he's also going out with more than one girl. Kendo simply nodded. Damn, now I'm mad. This is not fair. Wait until the others hear this. Takage, you can't tell anyone about this. Huh? Why? It's my fault. I shouldn't have gone after him. No, no, it's their fault for being so stubborn and his fault for being a cheater. I don't know what they have against you, but this is not right. Kendo looked straight in her eyes. Talkage, you can't tell anyone. Tesk, you can't let them just walk away with this Kendo. Before Kendo could say anything else, Tetsutetsu appeared on her door suddenly. He entered the room and quickly hugged Kendo, lifting her from her bed. Kendo, I'm so sorry for you, I just heard about it. Huh? Heard what? Tetsutetsu, what are you talking about? And you're hugging too tight. Oh my bad, he let go of her. Kirwaro just told us, Midoriya has someone already, right? Eh? How did you know that? He said he kept watching the entrance of the support course building, and then you came out running. A little after, Midoriya and Gyro came out, holding hands and everything. Wait, what did he say exactly? That Midoriya confessed to Gyro. Kiruwaro said it would be the only reason to make you cry like this. Again, I'm sorry for your loss. Tetsutetsu rested a hand on her shoulder, which she politely brushed away. Don't jump to conclusions so fast. Then why would you look so sad? Did he do something? Did he say something that hurt you? If he disrespected you, I swear, Tetsutetsu was already changing into steel, but Kendo stopped him. He didn't, Midoriya didn't do anything wrong to me, so just calm down, Tetsutetsu. The silver-haired teen did as she said, but still held an upset look on his face. Tesk, you know what? He's the one losing, he said. Takage frowned even more. Well, you can add cheater to the list of things Midoriya is. Huh, what do you mean, Takage? Kendo just said he confessed to Hatsum from the support course. If he came out with Gyro, it confirms everything. I, I'm sure there's an explanation to this. What? Now this? I'm gonna have a little chat with him. 
Tetsu Tetsu, don't do anything stupid Kendo held on the shirt of the silver-haired teen, keeping him in place. Are you kidding Kendo? They were getting in your way all this time. I'm not going to just sit while you're heartbroken and he's fooling around with a bunch of girls. WH who is heartbroken here? After that, Tsunatori brought her some hot chocolate to her friend. Oh, Kendo-chan, here, hot chocolate to help you get better. Kendo thanked the gesture but didn't drink much. She had to put her head in the right place. The blonde looked at her other friends with curiosity. What were you saying just now, Tetsu Tetsukun? I said I'm going to knock some sense into some hard heads. Did you know one a got in her way again? But why? They had been blocking Kendo all this time. Why Hatsum was okay? And there's more, he's also going out with Gyro. Gasp, how dare he? Guys, guys, please stop. I don't want to be on bad terms with them just because of something silly like this. But Kendo. No buts, Tetsu Tetsu. Just ignore this, all right? The girls were reluctant, but for now, they did as Kendo asked them, leaving her alone for the rest of the afternoon. Tetsu Tetsu, on the other hand, didn't like this a single bit. On the next day she had difficulty focusing on the lessons, so much that Vlad Sensei even asked if she was feeling ill. She had to force herself to eat during lunch, as she really didn't feel like doing so. The entire time she replayed the scene in her mind, the naked forms of the tree teens carved deep inside her memories, and every time she remembered it, she felt a little sting in her chest, like a constant reminder that Midoriya was with someone else. Not only that, there was the possibility that he wasn't the person she believed he was, after all, he was with two girls at the same time. Speaking of them, could it be that Hatsum and Jairo were okay with it? It didn't look exactly like they were fighting over him. Then again she ran away so fast that she didn't have any idea of what sequence of events could lead to that scene. Kendo yawned while they headed to the dorms. She didn't have much sleep that night because a certain emerald boy constantly appeared in her dreams, lacking his shirt or even worse. She would admit that Midoriya could be very attractive when you looked over his awkwardness. I mean the boy was hiding a well-trained body under those clothes and the contrast with his cute-looking face created a very unique charm that Kendo felt less and less able to resist. Kendo-san, Shizaki snapped her fingers in front of the redhead, bringing her back to earth. Huh? Shiozaki? Kendo looked at her friend with a surprised face. She simply froze in the middle of the way, looking at the void and lost in thought. The Emerald Boy still lingers in your mind? What? I don't. Um, yeah, a little. It's okay, Kendo-san, give time to the time. It's normal to shed some tears. Who knows, destiny can smile to you in the future and... Thanks, Shiozaki. You're right, I just need... Sometimes, that's all. Well, let's get going. But before they could take another step, a waste came running in their direction. His face was a sign of bad news. Kendo, finally I found you. Problems. Hey, easy a waste, breathe. What happened? He gasped for air before speaking again. Tetsu Tetsu. He's at the front of one of dorms, and he's challenging Midoriya to a fight. He what? At this moment, in front of the dorms, the silver-haired boy was shouting as loud as he could, demanding the green-haired teen to show himself. Midoriya, get over here if you call yourself a man. And from inside the building, the students watched confused. Well, most of them as Kirishima, Todoroki and Ida were coming down to see what was happening, and Bakugo was about to enter in a shouting contest. Midoriya himself observed from afar, having the girls beside him as confused as him. Tetsu Tetsu kun, there are better ways to communicate with other students. Bro, calm down a bit. What happened? Shut up, loser. Listening to someone screaming is damn annoying. Tetsu Tetsu looked at them, and once he noticed the lack of green, he went back at screaming. Midoriya, show yourself. Todoroki stepped in and calmly faced him. I see you have something to talk to Midoriya. That is, if you only plan to talk. Don't get in my way, Todoroki. I'm going to talk to him, for sure. With my fists. Students should only fight during the training, Ida shouted, chopping the air with his arm in a robotic manner. 
whatever, just bring him here. Midoriya, get over here, you coward. Scream again, and I'll blast you back to your dorm, shitty metal head. At that moment Kendo, Shiozaki, Tsunatori, and Oase arrived. Oase was quick to hold his friend back once he saw him trying to get past Todoroki and Kirishima. He couldn't imagine. Tetsutetsu was so angry like this. Dude, chill. You can't enter their dorm and just drag Midoriya out. Let go Oase, I'm gonna show him. He can't get away like this. Oase struggled to keep Tetsutetsu at bay, but he was fairly stronger. It was only when he received a knock on his head that Tetsutetsu stopped. He didn't have to look at the person to know who it was. This was a unique way of hitting his hard head. K okay, Kendo? She looked at him, slightly red in her face. She was, embarrassed? Why, he only wanted to help her. Also, why would she hit him? Tetsutetsu, what do you think you're doing? Kendo, I, I couldn't let things just slip like this. You may fake that you're okay, but I know it hurts, and I had to do something. I told you, I told everyone to just ignore this. I can't. You can't? Yeah, I can't. I cannot accept this. He forced his arms free and walked past Todoroki, only to be stopped by a hardened arm. Kirishima looked at him and his eyes told him he would use strength if needed. Tesk, you guys, always getting in the way. Tetsutetsu said under his breath. I'm waiting, Midoriya. Inside the building, everyone gathered at the common room, and all the eyes changed from the main door to the green-haired teen, still surrounded by the girls. He didn't know what happened, neither why Tetsutetsu seemed so angry at him. But he had to do something. The girls objected about going, but he had to see what was going on. He noticed this before, but he decided to ignore it. Everyone was being super protective over him, not only the girls, everyone. So Midoriya decided to sort this himself. He sensed that the boy wouldn't rest until he said whatever he had to say. Tetsutetsu grimaced once he spotted the emerald boy coming out. Shoving Kirishima slightly to the side, he stomped his way ahead and grabbed Midoriya by the collar of his even raised a fist but hesitated to deliver the punch. His eyes moved to his back, where he saw Kendo looking at the scene and ended letting him go. He let his head fall down while his clenched fists twitched as he tried to tone down his anger. You wanted to say something, Tetsutetsu-san? Yeah, there's something I wanted to ask you. He raised his head again and glared Midoriya straight in the eyes, eyebrows furrowed and sharp teeth showing behind a frown. Who do you think you are? Huh? Sorry, I didn't understand. Cut that out. Do you think you're so above her that she isn't worth your time? What are you talking about? Her? Tetsutetsu took a deep breath in. He had to hold back the urge to harden and punch this guy. Yes, her. You know, Kendo was very worried about you. Seeing you at that broken state, it really made her sad. Even I felt like that. She only wanted to help. Kendo-san? Yes, she told me about that. We talked a lot, and it made me feel much better, actually. So what? After that, she wasn't useful anymore to you? I never said that, where that came from. Tisk, so you'll keep playing dumb. I'll tell you then. You heard her. You didn't have to say yes, but not even considering it, and going out with two girls at the same time. That's really low of you, Midoriya. You really betrayed her feelings. Now the pieces started to connect for Midoriya. At that moment, Kendo appeared behind Tetsutetsu and pulled him away. She was doing her best to hide the small droplets at the corners of her eyes. Tetsutetsu, stop it this instant. Kendo, I... I said stop, just, please, stop. She dared to look at Midoriya's general direction, but she couldn't do so. He, it's not his fault. Kendo, they got in your way a lot of times. I'm furious because you didn't even have a chance. That hit Midoriya like a truck. He ignored that because he was focusing on other things, but more than one time he noticed this barrier between him and Kendo. After that talk they had, he really hoped they could get closer, but the opportunity never came. She saw him with Jiro and Hatsum in a very complicated situation, so he was worried that she would tell everyone about it. Turns out she somehow kept that a secret as Tetsutetsu seemed angry with something else. 
Even without asking, even not being so close, she decided to keep some part of this a secret. Looking at her now, Kendo looked genuinely sad. He did this? How? Tetsu Tetsu, leave him alone. Please. But Kendo, he, he did this to you. No, he didn't. She looked at Tetsu Tetsu, and he never saw a look like that in her face. She was begging for him to stop. Forget it? For me, okay? For her? Yes, that was the reason why he was angry. He was doing this for her, and Kendo couldn't imagine how hard it was for him. From the start Tetsu Tetsu told himself, it is for the best, it is what she wants, so he could deal with it. Not that he blamed her, she wouldn't know if he didn't tell her. He, the guy who always talking about being a manly man, never got the courage to tell her what he really felt. Ironic, right? And then, out of nowhere, she developed a sudden interest in Midoriya. Given his situation, he completely understood her desire to do something and help the guy recover. Tetsu Tetsu himself had a similar feeling, but he wasn't sure about how to do so. Anyway, she went all the way to reach him, and after that, she looked different. Not in a bad sense of the word, but she looked more radiant, alive. Being the big sis of the class, she always helped everyone but Kendo herself never had too many problems, practically a genius. Still, she was kind of isolated, not that her classmates excluded her, her tastes were kind of different. Many times he tried to show interest into whatever she liked, and he indeed found motorcycles cool and all, but he never managed to go very deep on the topics. Then Midoriya came around with a simple talk, they bonded in a way he hoped he could be with Kendo. It was just one talk, but Tetsu Tetsu was sure of it. Kendo found someone who could understand her, someone to share what she liked, someone special. The problem is, Tetsu Tetsu though he could be this special someone, he really wanted to. But it didn't matter, if she was happy, so be it. He would deal with it, the pain in his chest would eventually fade, right? Right? He could endure that for her, as long as Kendo kept her bright smile, which was the main reason why he got so infuriated. The moment he saw her in her room, with her cheeks wet with tears, he felt his heart sink as if was made of steel and tossed in the ocean. How did he let that happen? No, more important, who did this? He could stand seeing her with someone else, but if someone hurt her like this, then he had to do something. He didn't care about Midoriya's condition, not after this. There was no excuse. So why, after all this, Kendo wanted him to stop? Was the Emerald Boy so important to her that she was willing to give up on herself? Tetsu Tetsu, he had hope. Deep down he felt a little happy that Midoriya didn't say yes because he had a chance at least to tell her how he felt. It was a bit selfish of him, yes, but he really liked her. So much that he couldn't stand seeing Kendo so sad and heartbroken. He wouldn't allow her tears to fall for no reason, or else he couldn't call himself a man. That was how he felt, but she told him to stop. A long sigh followed, and he simply looked at the ground. There was no point in fighting Midoriya if that would make Kendo even sadder. Tesk whatever. You're really a lucky guy, Midoriya, and you should never forget it, Tetsu Tetsu said and turned around to leave. Kendo reached a hand to him, but he completely ignored. He wasn't mad at her, but he wasn't sure he could put up a straight face to look at her right now. The steel teen simply left the scene, with his friends coming after him. Kendo glanced back one last time before joining them. Meanwhile, the students of Wana looked at the group and at Midoriya, trying to understand what just happened. While Midoriya still watched them walk away, Bakugo came up to him and pulled the collar of his shirt, already baring his teeth. Deku! What was all that about? H. How should I know? He said something about you going out with someone, explain that. H. He must have misunderstood something. I had a little talk with Kendo, but it was just that. Bakugo glared at Midoriya and his eyes narrowed. Something was off. The ash blonde teen let go of him once he felt a slightly cold hand land on his shoulder. Whatever. But don't think for a second you're important just because you're the center of attention, Deku Bakugo said and headed back to the dorms cussing under his breath. Midoriya also headed back with the rest of his friends. There he found the girls looking at him with slightly guilty looks. They already knew what he was going to say. Honestly, he was really surprised this time. 
he could understand why the girls were so protective, but to think the entire class would join them into this was very unexpected to him. He looked at everyone present in the common room. Just as Kachin said, he was currently the center of attention, so he would use that now. Psy so, can someone tell me the reason to create this barrier between me and anyone else? Ada, who was by his side, fixed his glasses before speaking. After seeing your condition, we thought it would be better if you took your time to fully recover, even more considering that Toga is close to you now. Then you all agreed to isolate me. Actually, it was my suggestion. Yoraka said timidly. Of course it was her idea. It's not like I didn't appreciate everything you all did to help me, but that was too far. I feel kinda bad that I didn't notice before. We were all afraid of causing you another episode if we touched the topic. Someone too curious could end harming you, Tadaroki said in his calm voice. He was honestly concerned about Midoriya's well-being. Come on, Tadaroki-kun, I'm not that fragile. I know, but it was a risk. Midoriya let out a long, tired sigh. He made everyone worry about him again, and what was worse, somehow he made Kendo cry. What did Tetsutetsu mean by him betraying her feelings? She did see him in a compromising position with two girls, but why would that make her so sad? Maybe her image of him being a good guy was shattered, which might have happened, but he didn't believe it was the real reason. No matter what was the reason, he had to do something about it. Tetsutetsu was right on what he said, he was a really lucky guy for having so many people that cared for him, even if they could go too far sometimes, and Kendo was one of them. So he turned around and exited the dorms again, with Yuraraka quickly following him. Deku-kun, where are you going? I have to, think, Ochako. I, sorry for doing this again, I just wanted to. Protect me, I know. I'm not angry at you or anyone. Looking back, I really was a wreck, he said scratching the back of his head, but I knew from the start that my problem wouldn't be solved by just ignoring it. I have to face this head on, still. He turned back to her briefly. Thanks for always taking care of me. And then he walked away as the sun cast its last light beams in the sky. He walked aimlessly for a while, wondering where could she be. He really hoped Kendo didn't go back to her dorms or else this would turn into a more complicated task. Then an idea sparked in his mind. Midoriya made his way to the main building of UA, specifically to the garden beside it. Talk about a lucky guess, he spotted an orange hair around a tree. He calmly walked there and sat on the other side of the three, looking up and thinking of what he should say. It's a little cold outside. There was a silent gasp, then some silence before her answer came. I don't mind at all, her voice was a little shaky. He didn't like it. Kendo san I. It's okay, I know it wasn't your fault. I don't blame your classmates either, they had the, the best intention, I guess. Sure, but it doesn't make things any better. You looked pretty sad. He heard a faint sob coming from the other side. I'm sorry. I think I wasn't a very good friend to you. What are you saying? Of course you were. Who showed me all those cool heroes and understood what I was saying? It was just one time. Does it matter? It was very important to me. I guess I didn't consider your feelings either. Well, honestly, I'm kind of lost in that part. What do you mean? My feelings. I don't know exactly what is going on right now. When, when you asked me if I liked someone, why did you do that? Kendo took some time to answer. Psai Yayurazu-san, she has a crush on you. What? Hold up, how did she know that? I can tell. The other day we were talking, and the way she spoke of you, she definitely has a crush on you. If only she knew, I see, but why did you ask? I wanted to discover whether you liked her or not. If yes, then I would tell her and help her to confess, and this is where things got complicated. How so? I got to know you better and, I don't know, somehow I ended developing a crush on you too. Oh my, I said it. Sure, why not? Yet another girl developing this type of feelings for him. 
It made him remember of the times Mom told him how he was a handsome boy and how the ladies would make a line after him. He didn't expect it to turn out true in his life. I, I'm sorry you got to discover it in that way. Don't worry, I shouldn't have followed you. Neither enter that room like that. I'll be, I'll be fine. The talk died and the awkward silence fell between them. At least the tree acted as a shield so they wouldn't pass out of embarrassment. But there was something else she wanted to know. Kendo had to ask. Ni Midoriya, what? What were you? You three were doing, at that time? Midoriya tensed up. Sooner or later she would ask, he was expecting this, how to approach the subject. Sai, I must be getting insane, he said under his breath. Kendo-san, can you keep that a secret? I know I'm asking a lot, but... Yes, sure, I don't mind, she sounded a little nervous. Erm, before you entered, the girls were helping me to ease up and relax a bit. They gave me a massage, and it actually worked pretty well. Then we got into the mood and, breath in yes, we were going to have sex. He heard a loud gasp from the other side. The sex? Why you three? At the same time? Why yes, you must think I'm a sick pervert, right? Well, um, it's okay, it is probably the truth. Can I tell you something else? Something else? Yes, since I told you this already. Is there anything else you can say after this? Sure, shoot it. It wouldn't be the first time. In fact, I had been doing this for some time now, except for these last weeks because, you know, kidnapping and all. R really? I, um, um, I would have never guessed. I know, right? Ah, and about Yayurazu, we did that too. You did? Yes, every girl from my class, Hatsum, Midnight Sensei, and MT, Lady 2. And the best part, they all are my girlfriends. Kendo-san? Midoriya didn't hear any sounds coming from her. Did she just run away? Looking around the three, he saw the orange-haired girl with her hands on both sides of her head and the most shocked face he had ever seen. All of them, and he, he had, with all of them, they all, you. Um, Kendo-san? Eh? Kendo jumped away from him once she noticed him standing by her side. Yeah, that is to be expected. She thinks I'm a pervert, if not worse. Don't worry, I won't. Do anything, I promise. Sorry about that, I was just surprised. I can imagine. So, why are you telling me this? I don't know. I felt that you should know. I'm not, I'm not so worthy of your care after all. What do you mean? Tetsutetsu said before that I betrayed your feelings. He's right, I'm not the person you thought I was. So he came here because of this, don't take this so seriously, it's just a silly crush. I have to take this seriously. I, I have to consider the feelings of every girl around me, every person that cares about me. Otherwise, I won't be able to return these feelings. Return? What does he mean? It will probably sound like a terrible excuse, but... I really love each of my girlfriends. It started in a weird way, but I can't see myself living without them, and they love me in the same way. I ended making you sad so I have to make up for this. I don't know how, though. Kendo looked at him, at his green eyes. He was being completely honest here. She told him she would keep the secret, but did he really trust her that much? This is a lot to process. Aren't you afraid I might tell someone else about it? You said you wouldn't, so I believe you won't. We're friends, after all, right? Kendo looked down at the grass. After all that happened, he still wanted to be her friend. He came to see her because he was worried for her. No, we're not. Uh, W what? He asked weakly. She looked up at his face again. We're not friends. Not close friends, at least. We just had one talk. It was fine, but does it instantly make us friends? Well, I mean, as sure, it makes sense. He looked away, then Midoriya felt a pair of hands rest on his shoulders. Then, if we're not friends, there will be no excuses like ruining our friendship, right? I, I suppose not. Kendo was getting closer and closer to him. Midoriya backed up, but his backs quickly met the tree trunk. I don't think any less of you, Midoriya. 
To me, you're still a wonderful person. Oh, thanks, I guess. You wanted to make things up for me, right? Yes. She got closer to his face. And you said you loved all of your girlfriends. I, I do, I promise. HMHM, it kind of sounds like something you would do. Really? Really? Ni Midoriya? She got even closer. He could feel her breath brushing his cheeks. There's a way to make things up for me. How? He already had a very clear idea. She closed her eyes. Can you kiss me? What should he do now? Kendo wasn't forcing him or anything. She wouldn't tell anyone even if he refused, but she really wanted it. What should he do now? How did he feel about Kendo? Did he love her? Maybe love was too soon but, back there when they were chatting, a little spark was lit within him. She was an awesome person, looked pretty, was smart and very fun to hang around with. It was a brief time that they spent together, but it was more than enough for him to hold her dear to his heart. She came to him when he needed help, when he felt vulnerable. And she was pretty much where he was before, so he had to help her too. Could he do that? Could he return her feelings? Honestly, he really wanted to. Midoriya leaned in, closing the remaining gap between the two of them. Her lips were pretty soft. She probably never kissed someone before as they remained frozen in the same way. Maybe he should guide her into this, so he gently caressed her cheek with his fingers. The gesture surprised her but was enough to allow Midoriya to deepen the kiss a little. He tilted his head slightly and Kendo mirrored him, starting to enjoy it herself. She never thought something so simple could be so amazing. Then again, it could be because she was kissing her crush. It only got better as his hand reached the side of her head and the other held at the base of her neck. He was so tender and careful to hold her like she was a fragile flower someone was changing place in the garden. Even knowing he already had sex with a lot of girls, she felt safe with him. As he pulled her closer, Kendo let her body rest on him, focusing only on the kiss, on his lips that showed her this new world of sensations and feelings, on his strong arms that embraced her in a warm hug. Oh boy, she was loving it. Kendo didn't want this moment to pass. Can someone please stop time? The world could stop right now, and she wouldn't care a single bit. Unfortunately, she had to breathe. Kendo held as much as he could before breaking the kiss and gasp for air. Hey, easy there, I'm not going anywhere soon. Then, one more time. Sure, why n? She didn't was time. Now that she had an idea of how to kiss, Kendo tried to take the lead, deepening it and latching on Midoriya. She got surprised when she felt his tongue, but it was a very welcomed one. Once again they broke the kiss and again she asked for another one. She discovered that putting more energy into it made it much more passionate, a proper way of showing him how she really felt. Kendo mimicked him, caressing his green locks, then her hands started to go lower and lower, traveling across his body down to his abs, then going around to his backs. He felt so strong and warm that she believed nothing could reach for her beside him. There was nothing else she wanted, no other place she wanted to be at but in his arms. Well, there was one more thing she wanted too. Being this close to him, it was bound to happen. She felt a little too warm. Kendo broke the kiss, looking away with shyness and red all over her face. Are you okay, Kendo-san? Why, yes, I just feel hot. She whispered the last word so low Midoriya didn't listen even being this close to her. I didn't get it. I'm, I'm feeling hot, okay? Kendo kept looking anywhere, but at him, also covering her face with one hand. Midoriya couldn't help but smile. Sorry about that, it may be my fault. We can stop it here if you want. Stop? Yes, we don't need to do anything you don't want to. We are not even sure if, well, this will work, he said pointing to both of them. Kendo then looked back at him. I, I don't think so. I really like you, Midoriya. I mean, I don't feel like this is just a temporary crush. Then we can keep it like that. A kiss is enough for you? Actually. Huh? She hesitated a bit, poking her index fingers together. You know, sometimes I wondered what it would be if, you know, I saw you with these girls after all, and, um, F forget I said it. 
No, wait, Midoriya said, getting up and taking her with him. He then held her hand. If you want to, but only if you really want, we can go a little further. Even in the dark, he could see her face getting redder. All right, L, let's do it. Still holding her hand, he lead her across the campus to the support course building. She knew where they were going. They walked through the corridor and he opened the door at the end. Kendo hesitated a little before entering. Are you sure this is a safe place? May said she fixed the lock. This time, no one will, you know. She followed him inside the white room and the door closed after her. She looked around nervously, avoiding to look at Midoriya directly as he sat on the bed and patted the place next to it, telling her to sit. She did so but her face was red as a pepper. So, how do you, um, do this normally? It depends on the person. Each one has the own pace and preferences. Um, let's get you more at ease first. Eh? And before she could react, Midoriya moved his hands and cupped her bosoms. Kendo felt the urge to hit him but managed to contain herself. She asked for this so she had to deal with it. He was more experienced than her so he should know what he was doing. Still, she felt extremely embarrassed, yet good. He was very gentle while touching her as if she would break at any moment. Kendo didn't want to admit out loud, but it felt really good, especially when he made circles around her nips with his fingers. Even having her shirt and bra in the way, it felt pretty good, so she wondered what it would feel like if, do you want to take them off? W what? Your clothes. Oh, oh, can you read minds, Midoriya? No, um, practice? Kendo slowly took off her shirt, putting it by her side. She couldn't look at his face, knowing by the heat in her cheeks that she was blushing madly. Next came her light blue bra, put together with her shirt. Kendo covered her chest instinctively so Midoriya rested a hand on her shoulder, asking for permission to continue. He slid his hands down to her arms, rubbing them in an attempt to make her less nervous. Kendo slowly loosened up, exposing her bare chest to him, and he resumed what he was doing earlier. This time Kendo couldn't help but moan a little, which only made her more embarrassed. T, they are not big like, Yayorazu san but m. This is not a problem, I don't have preferences, and it kind of made me sound like a pervert. I don't ah uh, mind at all, it's an good to know, actually oh. Want to go further? Yes. One of his hands slid down, feeling her sides and abs, then holding at the hem of her skirt and pulling it down. Kendo held his hand by instinct, so he waited for her to say when he could continue. Sorry, you must be getting hot impatient. Not a single bit, take your time and try to relax a little. She let go of his hand and leaned her body on his. Midoriya removed her skirt, taking the opportunity to feel her thighs, smooth but with toned muscles under the skin. Kendo shuddered and felt jolts run down her spine as his hands traveled over her body. They barely started and she was already feeling so good that she couldn't think of something else besides him. Then, a new sensation struck her like lighting. He gently placed his fingers between her legs, rubbing her private parts. Kendo closed her legs, but it only made things worse. Midoriya then reached forward and captured her lips, effectively putting her at a more relaxed state. Already short-breathed, Kendo let her body rest completely on him, lost in his bright green eyes. Slowly but steady, Midoriya kept advancing until he stripped Kendo of her. Then he slid one finger inside, moving just enough to test whether she was sensitive or not. Afaya, sensitive, very sensitive. My Midoriya imam just, just a moment I. You will feel better soon, I promise. She felt weird. Kendo never experienced something like that before, so everything he did was new and made her anxious. But she knew she could trust him, and with that in mind, she brushed away some of her anxiety. Kendo felt him sliding a second finger in, moving his hands slowly inside her, making her squirm in his arms and moan. Something started to build up inside her, her heart was beating faster by the minute. Suddenly, Midoriya made her lay down on the bed and lowered his head to her waist. Midoriya, what are you haya? Ah, uh, but it feels so good. Midoriya just stuck his tongue inside her slit, tasting some of her juices. 
It didn't take him too much to make Kendo completely wet. Then again it was her first time. He had to go easy on her. She tried to close her legs, but he prevented it by holding on her thighs, caressing them and spreading her legs wide open. She reached for his head to push him back, but at that moment he went deeper, making her moan louder. Instead of pushing off, Kendo held his head and brought him closer. She never felt so good in her life. The unknown feeling kept increasing, fogging her mind. She could only think of him and the amazing sensations he was giving her, then Kendo reached her limit. She felt something coming, like a dam about to break. Bahamidoriya, something ah, I'm coming ah, Midoriya. She arched her back a little, her toes curled, she held on his green locks and bit her lower lip as she felt her very first blast. Midoriya didn't have any problem to lick every drop of her juices. He hovered above her, waiting for her to catch her breath. Do you want to stop? I, you did more than that with, right? Well, yes, way more, to be honest. Then I want to do it too. Kendo, you don't need to force yourself into this. Kendo then held at the hem of his shirt and lifted it, taking it off. She took a moment to admire his toned chest and abs before getting rid of his shorts and underwear. Once again, Midoriya surprised her. I want to, Midoriya. Just, go easy, okay? She said looking down and with a hint of nervousness in her face. Midoriya positioned himself at her entrance. I'll start slowly. Tell me to stop if you need some time. And then he slid his member inside her, bit by bit, careful to be as gentle as possible. Her body twitched now and then, but she was making an effort to keep going. When she felt something stretch inside her, she had to stop. Um, it'll hurt a little, but it gets better after some time. Oh, okay. Ready? Are ready. Midoriya pushed a little deeper, and now Kendo was officially not a virgin. As he expected, she let out a scream. It hurts. Midoriya quickly muffled her screams with a kiss, waiting for her to get used to him. The pain faded away and Kendo finally started to understand why people did this. When Midoriya went completely inside her, she discovered why he had so many girls after him. It's so big Midoriya, how did you fit in there? You get used to it. Ha, huh, Kendo-san, you feel so good. I, Itsuka, ah, you can call me U. Then, Izuku is fine too, ah, I'm going to start moving. Right. Itsuka held on him as soon as she felt his member move inside her. It was so hot and it made her inner walls expand while it went back and forth. Each thrust sent jolts through her body and she couldn't contain her moans anymore. She should feel at least a little ashamed for making these lewd noises, but she didn't care, she was loving having sex with Izuku, she was loving feeling his huge member sliding inside her. Izuku held on her thighs again and pushed them up, opening her legs more and reaching deeper inside her. Itsuka widened her eyes, this was so good that her mind was starting to get all fuzzy. Uo, it's so deep, Ata Izuku, your huge member is going deep inside me, I never felt mm, something like this, Hyan. Your wet part feels amazing, Itsuka, it's sucking me in. He kept moving slowly but reaching deep inside her, finding her sensitive spots and hitting them over and over again. Itsuka wrapped her legs around his waist and locked him like this, pushing his body even closer to her own. Izuku take me completely I want more ah. Yes, have me more high ah. Make me yours Izuku forever ah I'm going to climax again. I'm going to, Itsuka. Tea together, Hyan, let's climax together, Izuku. Ah, it's coming, it's coming. Itsuka. Izuku released his seed inside her, mixing with her own juices that mixed in a hot mess, filling Itsuka to the point of spilling out. She arched her backs again as she had a blast, and her eyes rolled up a bit. Her mouth opened in a wide smile and her tongue stuck out. Her body shook a bit while she held on the mattress. Breathing heavily, Itsuka looked lost in bliss for a moment, then her eyes focused again on him. Izuku could almost see the heart-shaped pupils. He almost got used to this look, keyword being almost. She reached for him with her arms, wrapping them around his neck and pulling him into a kiss. Once they broke it, Izuku laid by her side. Itsuka pulled a blanket up to cover them and nested herself on his chest, tracing circles with her fingers.
Me, Izuku. Yes, Itsuka? That was amazing. You're the best. I don't know, there could be someone else better than me. Even if there is, you're the best for me. I wouldn't want anyone else. Thanks, I guess. Ni Izuku. What is it? I think I love you. Would you be my boyfriend? Um, about that. Oh right, your other girlfriends. Do you think they'll mind just one more? I, honestly, I don't know. Yon, I want to be your girlfriend too, even if I don't get to be the only one. I'll get Yon used to share, right? There are other things you should worry about, like the girls are kinda possessive and maybe a little too jealous, so you will need to convince them. I can kind of help you since, well, I might also like you, but anyway you need to. Itsuka? She, she is asleep. How am I supposed to get her back to her room? Seeing Itsuka sleeping by his side, hugging him like a plushie, made him give up on waking her up, at least for now. This soft and sweet side of her was new to him, as Itsuka always looked like a strong and very capable girl. Then again, most of his girlfriends had a side quite different from their usual personalities. Just like what Ochako said, it was just a side of Itsuka he didn't know yet. Oh boy, Ochako. She's going to kill me when she finds out about it. Well, probably most of them. Sai, what now? Will I make every girl in you a fall for me? And while Izuku wondered how to explain to his already large harem, they got a new member. A pair of floating eyes watched from the corner as wide as they could be. The eyelids got half closed and the pair of eyes floated through an air vent on the ceiling, coming outside the room and returning to their owner. Said person had long dark green hair that got curly closer to the edges. The dark green eyes, now back on the right place, completed the mischievous look in her face along with a sly toothy grin. Well, well, look what we have here. She looked at the locked door one last time before leaving the building and heading back to her dorms. I think I found something very, very interesting. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Everyone Gets Obsessed With Deku and Had Harim? I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Guy Number 23 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works the link is in the description below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to What If Deku 2 for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.